Ladies and gentlemen, we're uh, oh. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Due to COVID-19, Committee for Adjustment public hearings are being conducted virtually by electronic means through WebEx, an online digital platform, and streamed on the Toronto City Planning YouTube channel. Participants who have registered in advance will be able to make their presentation to the committee using WebEx webinar, which is moderated by city uh, staff. Anyone wishing to view the hearing may watch on YouTube. My name is Isaac Laluz, and uh, with me uh, this afternoon is Ms. Satarode, Ms. Sankar, Mr. Hunt, and Mr. Khan. Participants who have registered in advance will be able to make their presentation using their smartphone, telephone, and have the option of participating via video or audio only. All participants will automatically be muted on entry. When your item is called, each participant will be unmuted by the moderator, one person at a time. And the staff here moderating the platform is Mr. Simon Lamb, who is Deputy Secretary Treasurer, Irvin Bridgeray, and, uh, and Sam Muzayani. Those, part those participating by video appearance will be temporarily upgraded to panelists when your item is being held. During this time, your camera will be enabled and you will only be visible during the five minutes mark allocated to you. At all times, your video will be disabled and you'll be reinstated as an attendee. Committee of Adjustment staff will share presentations submitted in accordance with the written submission deadline. Members of the public and, ap and applicants are not allowed to use share screen or any other panelist control during a video appearance. The host will remove you from the panelist role if you fail to respect this instruction. The land allocation. We, we acknowledge the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. In accordance with Section 45 and 53 of the Planning Act 1990 as amended, this, this meeting of the Committee of Adjustment of the City of Toronto is called to order. Committee of Adjustment considers applications for variances from the provision of the zoning bylaw permission to extend or alter legal non-conforming uses, and consent to several property to create new lots. Anyone in attendance today who wants to receive a copy of the decision of the committee on an application must submit a written request for a decision by email. Please ensure that you include your name, address, and email address because the Committee of Adjustment and the T-Lab will be sending notifications and appeal updates by email only. If you do not agree with the decision of the committee, you may be able to appeal the decision to Toronto Local Appeal Body T-Lab or, in some limited circumstances, to the Ontario Land Tribunal called the OLT. However, the provincial government recently amended the Planning Act and generally removed the rights of third party to appeal Committee of Adjustment decisions. As of November 28, 2022, only the appellant, the Minister of Municipal Affairs and, and Housing, special specified persons and public bodies as those terms are defined in the Planning Act are permitted to appeal decisions of the Committee of Adjustment. Appeal instructions are set out at the bottom of the decision of the committee. Hearing procedure Today, I will call each item in the order listed on the agenda. Where an application is uncontested, the agent or applicant may proceed with their presentation, if desired. When the committee does not require a presentation, applicants are to advise the chair should they wish to speak to the committee. The committee may ask questions and or take the, the matter for decision. Each speaker, including the applicant agent, 
will be given a maximum of five minutes to address the committee. I will comment when the five minute mark is reached. When addressing the committee, please clearly state your name and address, and please remember to confine your remarks to the matters outlined in the application. The applicant or agent will proceed first and will make a presentation on the application. Please note that the committee may not entertain revisions to proposals at the hearing today. The committee may decide to defer the application if substantially revised to ensure that the revised application is accurate and that all those entitled to receive a notice of the application are informed of the changes. Then individuals either in support or in opposition will be invited to speak. Committee members may ask questions of each speaker at the end of their presentation. When all speakers are finished, the applicant agent has the chance to address only those issues that were raised by the speakers. This will mark the end of the discussion and the application will be taken into committee for decision. Now, for this afternoon, we have nothing. There is no uh, minutes to approve. There is no uh, deferral request and there is no closing files. So all I wanna ask is the members and staff any conflicts of interest to declare for this afternoon session? No? Okay. So we'll, we'll proceed with the first application of this afternoon, which is number 20, and that is 147 Newton Drive, application number 20. And here we have Mr. Ryan Cyrus. Are you there? Mr. Chair, I'm here, yes. Okay, can you please state your name and address so you can be registered on the system? My name is Robin Cyrus. My address is 4789 Young Street. Thank you. We have, this is a new uh, dwelling. Staff report has two, uh, two uh, uh, items. One, modify the variance number three. And... Um, and uh, number B, the second is to, just to develop for east and west elevation drawings. Now, uh, the, I believe the number three is the uh, is the coverage, and as I understand, there was a, a miscalculation in the average in the in the coverage, which is really 32 percent. So transportation. That's correct. 30, 30, 30, transportation is okay with the conditions listed in there February 21st and there is one, only one letter, but we have no nobody here to object, only in on le one letter we had on file. So please take your five minutes if you want to cover uh, uh, what we said here and, uh, and see if you make any more changes besides uh, variance number the, the, for the coverage. Sure, um, thank you so much. Um, uh, I'm requested to uh, acknowledge that the um, coverage is 32 percent um, and this is what we requested and our drawings show the same and uh, there was a, um, a misunderstanding, miscalculation. Uh, the new notice that city sent is actually um, uh, correcting that to 32 percent. Item number two, uh, or per our design, we are actually needing 8.65. So even if we get that number that is on the notice, we are going to be using that number, 8.65. Uh, um, there are two letters on the um, file. One is from the uh, transportation that um, is about item variance number four and five. Uh, we have read that and we are in agreement and we will comply to all those conditions. Also, there is another letter by staff uh, planning department um, uh, talking about uh, um, first three items. We have read that and we are in agreement and we will comply with all those conditions. Uh, there was a letter uh, from the counselor. Um, I have been in touch with them and uh, apparently there has been misunderstanding. So they did send a letter and uh, they did withdraw 
uh, that their request uh, from the Committee of Adjustment. Um, and for letter of uh, objection, um, I'm, I'm not quite sure how to answer that. It's more of like broader issue about neighborhood and, and um, stuff like that. I'm not quite sure if it uh, directly applies to uh, the uh, proposal that we have. If, there, if it is, then um, please ask direct question and I'll try to answer. Thank you. Uh, now, all right. Yeah, anything else? No, no, I'm nope. good. Okay. Yeah, the, um, yeah, so that's incompatible. The council's letter is just asking for the 32%, which is you're changing anyways. They also mentioned the height. Do you have anything about the height? As I mentioned, uh, they, they did withdraw their letter and they are not requesting because they thought we are actually um, uh, increasing our side walls to that number. But uh, the, the number that we have is actually for the front, uh, front wall. And it's, uh, it's more of the design that we are okay. asking. The, the wall turns to the side a bit and that triggers that number for the side as well. And uh, the, the letter that comes from the planning department clearly uh, mentions that, and they are asking us to keep the uh, design um, substantially to what we have right now, which we are in agreement and we will comply. Okay, thank you. Members, any sure. question? Any question for the speaker? Huh? No, it's not making change, it's just the 32%. The, um, um, yeah, well, that's what he, it said right there. Okay, 32%. That's variance number three. Variance number um, three. Mr. Chair. Yeah. Mr. Chair, um, I just want to get clarification. What I've heard is that the applicant also modified variance number two to be read at 8.65. Is that correct? Mr. Cyrus, can you can you get on, please? Hello. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, what we require is eight point six five. If that's um, like, if I can change it, I would go to eight point six five. Well, uh, if I'm not allowed, I'll still my design still be uh, at eight point six five. Sir, you say if I if I want, I can change it. We don't negotiate here. You tell us what you want to change it to, and then we'll make a decision. Eight point six five. 8. Thank 6. you so much. Okay, so you're changing number two to 8.65. Okay, thank you, Mr. Tarodi. That's a good question. And uh, and the uh, and number three, of course, uh, it was a miscalculation. It's a 32 percent, and he agrees to change it to 32 percent. Any other question? Yes. No. Okay. So can I have a motion then, Mr. Khan? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, after listening to the presentation, I think variance number two has been modified 8.65. Number three has been modified to 32%. As transportation has con put condition in the letter of February 21, 2023. And the staff recommendations make it like this. We developed substantially in accordance with the east and west side elevation drawings submitted to the Committee of Adjustment and Attachment 1 and 2 to this report. This application be approved with condition uh, in the transportation services. Okay. Uh, do I have a second? Can I have a second? Mr. Hunt seconding. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay, sir, your application is approved unanimously subject to those conditions and the changes you made. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, application number 21, which is uh, 180 Bell Size Drive, application 21, and this is Wojtek Korzynski. Are you there?
Woodstick Gorsinski. Mr. Chair, Watch, Watch Tech has been unmuted. He's unmuted, thank you. Okay, Mr. Korzynski, are you there? Yes, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Please say your name and address. I hope I didn't misread mis 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 it too much. Go ahead, please. It was close. Uh, close. Wojtek Gorczynski, 180 Belside Drive, Toronto, Ontario. Thank you. So here we have a, um, we have a rear, uh, rear deck, rear yard deck, five variances, staff reports, said to me, you, you want to change, modify variance number one. So before we move on, tell us what you're changing it to. By application, I mean, variance number and what you're changing it to. Yes, um, I just wanted to mention that the, uh, I also submitted a waiver which explains the, um, the change uh, in more detail. And for some reason, it's, it's not sir, been... Sir, excuse, um, excuse me. Before we go to details, we need to record if you make any changes. If you want to make any change, tell us what the variance number and what the... Yes, change. yes. Variance number Yes. Uh, uh, the change is in the... Um, um, in the num uh, item number one... Yes. Um, so the... Uh, okay, let me just... Uh, read it. Um, you want me to tell you what you said before? Yes. So um, the uh, uh, with discussions with the city uh, planning staff, uh, we we agreed to raise the uh, soft, soft landscaping area to forty five percent. Thank you. That's a change. Okay. Any other change? Which means increasing the uh, the area by 16.2 square meters. So that would mean, uh, uh, raise the, the overall okay, so soft landscaping area to 45 percent. Please go ahead, make your presentation. That's, so uh, by doing, uh, but by increasing the soft landscaping area by uh, 16.2 meters, uh, we would achieve 45 percent um, soft landscaping. Uh, uh, area, and that's the main main area we um, um, we agreed to change. The rest, in our view, is is very minor, in, and it's actually uh, would create problems with the uh, maintenance of the deck, and the that that's the uh, uh, setback requirements from the lot, lot line. Uh, that's the uh, number two uh, item. And I also wanted to address the item number five, which is the uh, size of the uh, parking pad. Um, we reduced the, the parking uh, dimensions just to get as much uh, soft landscaping as possible. And that's, the, that's why it's, uh, the parking pad is a little bit undersized. Uh, are you changing anything in number five? No. No. Okay. So the only change you're making is the um, is number one. You're changing it to forty five percent, right? Yes, that's okay. right. Okay. So I don't have anybody else here re registered. Twenty one. Just you. Uh, are you finished? We go to committee. Yes. Okay, members. <clears throat> Any question for this speaker? He's changing uh, variance uh, to forty five percent. If there is no question, Ms. Atarodi? No, I don't have any question, but I'm ready to put forward a motion. Please go ahead. Okay, to you, Mr. Chair, I would like to uh, approve the application with, with the following changes. Variance number one, the proposed rear yard landscaping area is 45%, and this is my motion. That's it, thank you. Second? Ms. Sankar, seconding. All in favor? Okay, thank you. Yes, yeah, sir, your application is approved, subject to that change you made. Thank you. Number 22, which is 339 Maplehurst Avenue, application number 22. And here we have 
Now I have two people registered here, I believe, in the same party. We have Morteza Davari and Michael Zhang. Which one is here today? Mr. Chair, only Michael Zhang is here today. Just you. Okay. Could you please uh, state your name for the record, your name and your address? My name is Michael Zhang. I'm located at 280 Sharper Avenue East, uh, Unit 203. Okay, now, um, this is a new dwelling, three variances only, uh, forestry condition number three, and the counselor's letter reduced to 32%, and staff report is, um, is uh, submitting that you made some uh, changes to uh, variance number two, and could you please tell us what you did, and they have a condition of develop paper East and West Side drawings. So, give us. Yeah. Uh, Please go ahead. So, for the variance number one, uh, we're going to change uh, the side exterior main wall, <clears throat> majority of them to be 7.5 meters. And only the window part is going to be 9.46 meters. Uh, variance number three. Number one, you said, huh? Yeah, for the number for the number one, yeah. Okay, number one, uh, what you're changing it to? So we just gonna lower down the majority of the side exterior main walls to be seven point five meters. How much? And only the window part to be the nine point four six meters. Yeah, and you're changing it to how much? To how much? Oh, it's no. I, I gotta keep oh, for the nine point four six, uh, but the. So the, uh, the the main wall, yeah, exterior main wall, side main wall. Okay, so do you want us to change the variance the way it reads, or we just leave it as is? You can leave it as is. Uh, I put a condition saying like the uh, main wall height is, is 7.5, except the window, uh, except the, the one with the windows. Yeah, no, uh, no, we're not going to, we're not going to split it. We have here the variance reads sideline lot line as 9.46. If you want to change that number, yes. it will change it. If you only leave it. No, I don't want to change the number. Okay, so please keep go. this number. Okay, so you're just changing uh, number two to 32%. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. So please go ahead. And uh, for the number three, um, this is for the, the middle of the roof. And I think all three of them are, are pretty minor variances. Okay. And I hope the committee can approve this. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, we don't have uh, we don't have anybody else besides uh, the uh, the uh, the owner here, and the agent. So, um, members, any question? If you, if, if you got that change, all all he changed is uh, variance number two to thirty two percent, and there is a condition. Staff condition. I just have. Yeah, I have two 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 hands here. Which one want to go first? Yeah. Which a question? Which one? Mr. Khan. Okay, Mr. Khan, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I thought ladies first, but anyhow, thank you, uh, sir. My question through you is: Is it built, or still has to be built? I didn't hear it. Uh, uh, sir, we didn't hear it here. Staff didn't hear it and I didn't hear it. Could you speak slow, slowly and tell us what your question is? Sir, my question is, is this uh, building is built or still has to be built? It's not been built yet. No. It's just waiting for permit to. No. And it's not a... Thank you. Any other question? Okay, Miss Miss uh, Sankar. At already. So just um, to you, Ma Master Chair, I just want to comment on on the applicant was ex was uh, mentioned regarding the variance number one that majority of the side exterior main wall is seven point five. I think uh, because that's why the staff uh, recommend that we tie to east and west elevation. That will just cover that concern of the applicant. Right. 
So, so just the yes. color. Yeah. Thank you for that explanation. He didn't have to change it because it's covered in the uh, in the in the second uh, condition. You're right. Okay. So if there is no more condition, can I have a more a question? Can I have a, a motion, please? I can. Ms. Atarodi, please go ahead. Yeah. Um, through you, Mr. Chair, I would like to put forward a motion to approve this application with one change that the variance number two, the lock coverage is now 32%. And also, uh, as per staff recommendation, uh, the developed to be substantially accordance with the east and west elevation drawing submitted to the Committee of Adjustment uh, based on the report not February, dated February 15, 2023, and also for forestry condition. Thank you. Second. Mr. Hunt is seconding. All in favor? <clears throat> Unanimous. Thank you. Okay, sir, your application is approved, subject to uh, those two items, and actually forestry too. So 32% and uh, to develop per east and west elevation drawing. Okay, so uh, that's finished. One, we have number 23, item 23, which is 84 Renly Avenue, application number 23. And here we have Drew Laszlo, are you there? Mr. Laszlo. Good afternoon. I'm Drew Laszlo, agent for the owner. My address is 193 Row Avenue. Thank you. So you know the drill, eh? That's good. Okay. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry if I interrupt. No, no, that's okay. Uh, that's what we, we like to have the name and the address first because it has to be recorded on the system. So that's, um, we have number uh, 23, which is like we have a new dwelling, 10 variances, Four letters of support and transportation report said it's okay, no conditions as of their February 21st, 2023. So uh, could you just make a small, generally we won't, but in this case, there, there are 10 variances. Could you please go briefly on why you're asking for those uh, variances? Of course. Um, so uh, as mentioned, there are 10 variances. I can just briefly go through each one. A variance number one has to do with the side setback. That's the east setback of a rooftop um, patio that we are proposing. And that is, uh, that's the one thing just the, the committee should know. The majority of the variances are for the east side of the property. The east side is Ranley Park. Um, so uh, that variance is for the east side for the uh, proposed balcony. Variance number two has to do with the east side yard setback of the dwelling itself. Again, that's matching the, the setback of the proposed balcony above, and we are asking for 18 inches as opposed to three feet for that side setback. Variance number three has to do with uh, the FSI. We're just asking for 63%, where 60 is permitted. Uh, variance number four has to do with the wall height, really just of the dormers, the proposed dormers on the dwelling. There's two of those, one on each side. In actuality, the main eaves around the house is 7.03 high. So it's only for the eaves that we are requesting that 10.19 meter high wall height uh, for the, yeah, I'm sorry, for the dormers. Variance number five has to do with the side yard setback of the front porch itself. It's supposed to be three feet away. The front porch is, again, on the east side. Uh, we're proposing it to be two feet from the side property line. Variance number six has to do with the side setback of canopy. So, again, it's going to be the east side of the canopy over the front porch. We require a variance for that. Uh, variance number seven, again, on the east side, the park side has to do, because we're proposing an 18-inch side yard setback variance, um, we need another variance for the eaves, which will be coming pretty close to, um, for all intents and purposes uh, on, the prop on the property line, but set back 0 0.01 meters from it. Um, again, on the east side, variance number eight has to do with, the, we have a few uh, 
because we're only 18 inches from the side property line, we only, uh, the fire shutters need to be one foot away from the side property line. We're proposing them being six inches away. Vance's numbers nine and 10, they're really uh, two existing sort of conditions. They have to do for an existing parking space that's been there for as long as anybody can remember. Um, and we just need, we kind of want to legalize the parking space that's currently there. So we need one to be able to park in the front yard and it's slightly undersized. So we need a variance for that. And again, it was mentioned transportation has no issues with this. The planning department also uh, has no objections. So if the committee has any questions, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, members, any question? No, can I have a motion then, please? Ms. Sankar. Yeah, through you, Mr. Chair, you know, I've looked at this application and at the onset, you would wonder um, about the numbers of um, variances. But when you look at it, it's actually uh, pretty man minor and self-explanatory. There's a bit of uh, a quite a bit of support um, for the application as well. And so in the absence of anything from transport, I will um, put forward a motion to approve this application. Thank you. Second, Ms. Satarodi, all in favor? Ms. Mr. Khan, you're for? You're okay with this? Okay, so unanimous. Sir, your application is unanimously approved. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, number 24, which is uh, 24, which is 109, 112 Fairhome Avenue, 112 Fairhome Avenue. And here we have uh, Richard Idels. Are you there? Richard, Richard Idels. Okay. Could you please could you please state your name and address for us, please? Richard Idels. I'm the agent for the architect. Uh, for the owner, I'm the architect. Also, my address is 80 North Meadow Crescent in Thornhill, Ontario. Thank you. So here we have uh, just a number of additions. Nine variances. Forestry has just a uh, per letter of uh, February 14. Ten letters of support and transportation in their late report recommends to approve. Okay, so can you please make a, um, a short presentation because we have most of the information here and we'll move on. All right, I would like to uh, uh, explain why I believe uh, these are minor and necessary. Uh, first of all, the first, the, the first, shall we go through each one, Mr. Chairman? Do whatever you want. Yeah, just you, have, you have five okay. minutes, use it as you please. Okay. Uh, okay, the, the first one is a very small, uh, it's very small and it has to do with the overhang um, that is, uh, or no, it has to do with the, the deck and the rear that we kept the deck even with the side of the house and uh, that, that caused a variance um, because the, the house is 1.2 meters on, on, the, on the west side, on the, east, on the east side, I'm sorry. Number two, I'd like to point out there is a typo by the city Number two reads, the minimum required front yard and soft should be taken off. It's not soft landscaping, it's just landscaping. And also the next line, the proposed front yard, soft landscaping, they mean landscaping. They don't mean soft landscaping. So those two words are incorrect on the, uh, by the city. The numbers are correct, but just those words should be taken out. I want to point out soft landscaping is obviously on, on variance number three, where it does say soft landscaping but they, they should have not put soft landscaping in the two. That's just landscaping. Is that understood, Mr. Chairman? Please keep going. Keep going. Okay. Finished? Okay, uh, number four. Oh. Yeah, yes, I'm finished. Now, number, number, number four is um, we're asking for 41.33%. Uh, uh, we did our research. Um, there's one a house on the block. There's a few houses in the area that have been given that amount of uh, square footage. Also, the square footage is based on actual needs of the, of the family, and it's all in the, it has no real impact, we believe, on the community. It's in the back of the house, and it's not on the front of the house, and it, it's a wide lot. It's a wide lot. Number five, um, 
is uh, because of an existing condition. It's a very small um, setback, uh, which is existing. That's why it has to be uh, it has to be a, a variance. Uh, number six is uh, the the width the dry the width of the driveway, and uh, I'd like to come back to that. Let's just yeah, and, and and number seven is the parking space in front of the front yard. I want to point out there never was a garage in this house, so uh, parking has always been in, in front of this house. It just ha has to be that way. Um, and uh, I want to come back to that in a minute. Uh, number eight, uh, side yard uh, is we asked for a re relief on the west side. On the on the uh, that's number eight. Uh, on number nine, we uh, there it, we did not ask for relief over there. On the new addition is fine, but the uh, the set the where the the variance that's being asked for is because of an existing condition. Now I would like to go back to the. Uh, there was a comment made by uh, by uh, forestry. I would like to uh, just address that uh, quickly, and that is there are two there are two trees in the front of the house, city trees. Uh, everyone else on the block that does have a tree in front of it only has one. That tree will have to be uh, moved. We would we would gladly move it someplace else. But even if it has to be removed, um, there's still a tree in front of our house, and that's not different than any other house on the block. But why are we asking for a wide driveway? This is a uh, home where uh, both parents are teachers. They have a number of kids. No parking is allowed on the street. The, uh, the closest uh, curb parking is, is about a block away or more because of the proximity to the uh, city uh, uh, the, the city uh, underground, uh, they don't allow parking on the street. So it's a hazardous condition not to have a double driveway in a house in this area. Everyone else, uh, there, I, I, most people on this street have double driveways, including the house directly in, uh, on the other side of the street, are always concerned with this house because you have to take a car in and out, and there's no buses. The kids go to school with carpools, so there's constant uh, cars going in and out, and uh, not to have a double driveway would, would it is a dangerous condition, and we're trying to alleviate that. I know myself, when I went to visit uh, my clients, um, I had to, he had to take his car out and park illegally on, on the street because parking is not allowed for him to get a ticket and he allowed his architect to park in his driveway. Thank God he didn't get, uh, he did not get a ticket. Um, and let's see, uh, have I covered all the, I, uh, over there, no, no, I, th I think basically I have, we have a wide lot, we haven't asked for a, uh, We've asked for uh, the, the landscaping, as a, a, we believe it's a, a very small variance, landscaping and the soft landscaping. There's plenty, even with the, with the double uh, driveway, with the larger driveway, there's, it's a, because it's a wide lot for its length, there's plenty of green and grass in the front of the house for the kids to play in, and they do, and they enjoy it. And are there any questions from the committee? Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. for the parking, do, do they have a front yard parking on the street? No, not allowed, not allowed. And I don't think that's going to change. So uh, on both sides of the street, they're not allowed. They're not allowed. So they, don't, they don't even have the, uh, the permits for a front yard parking permit. No, no, because uh, the owner told me it's because the subway is a few blocks away. So that's just city policy that they don't have street parking near a subway for some reason. Well, okay. Uh, yeah, that's strange because if they don't have any parking on the... The permit, I mean, is not permitted to park on the street. Generally, you have a guy. Yeah, both, on both sides and for, uh, for at least a block away. Yeah, okay. All right. Uh, let's see uh, what the members are saying. Uh, any question? Ms. Atarodi? Yes. Um, to you, Mr. Chair, I would like to get explanation for variance number nine. Applicant explain everything, uh, and I would like to get some explanation regarding the east side yard setback, 0 0.93. Uh, it's an existing condition. Why is it existing? Minimum required side is 1.8, um, because the um, uh, uh, the reason is the, because we took the second floor, we took the second floor and we, uh, over the existing ground floor, there's a new second floor, and over the existing ground floor. So it's the ground floor is there, the second floor is new, but it's it's sharing the same wall and it's going straight up. Thank you. So, yeah, thank you. All right, okay, any other question? If not, can I have a motion then please? 
Ms. Atarudi? Yes, um, uh, before I put forward a motion, the two uh, variants number two and three, uh, the typo, it's, it's just nothing that we should put in the motion, right? It's just a typo that they put soft landscaping. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so if that's, the, it, okay, so then to you, Mr. Chair, uh, I would like to, I was listening to applicant and uh, there are three, uh, three out of these nine um, variants are existing situation. And therefore I would like to put forward the motion to approve this application. Um, there is no. Forestry, 24. Forestry um, yes, subjected to forestry condition. If if there is, hold on a second. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, there actually, is. there is no condition from forestry. Yeah, there is forestry condition per their letter dated February 14, 2023. February 20, February 13. 14. Yeah, February 14, 2023. 14. Okay, sure. Perfect. Yeah, subjected to urban forestry. Sorry. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. There is a condition. Second. Can I have a second, please? Mr. Hunt, all in favor? Thank you. Okay. Sir, your application is approved, subject to that uh, letter of uh, forestry. Can I make a clarification here? Uh, the, 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 for, the forestry objected to one of the variances. That that was it. That was a comment, Mr. Mr. Chair. The he can speak to us later. Yeah. The applicant can speak to staff later. Yeah, they can they can take it up with them. No, we can help him with the explanation. You can help them, yeah. Yeah. The staff will help them, yeah. Okay. The staff is saying that in that in that uh, uh, condition, the uh, the staff will help you solve that problem. Okay. And. Uh, and address the uh, the concern to secretary treasurer the deputy secretary treasurer he committed to 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 help you out okay okay thank you thank you okay all right he's, he's charge him too much stuff yeah well you're in charge Item number 25, which is 116 Holcomb Ride Road application number 25. And here we have uh, Mehdi Zheng. Are you there? Hi there. Mehdi Zheng. Okay. Uh, could you please state your name and address for us? This is Mehdi Zheng. Uh the address is 2710 14th Avenue, Markham, post code L3RCO31. Thank you. This is a new dwelling. Thank you. It's eight variances. Yes. We have. Uh, uh, actually, uh, could, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, but, could, you, uh, could, you, could, could, you, could you please just stop it, please? You, you, I'm sorry. You said your name and your address, right? Yes, I did. Okay. Now, I'm just telling you here. What the what the letter what the uh, application is for? Uh, it's it's uh, eight, eight variances. We have to, we have on file here three letters of objection, and the counselor letter is asking certain conditions. This letter so an objection letter. Okay, now could you please make it because we have one, two people are registered to speak. Was it two people? Uh -huh. Yeah, we have some people objecting to it. And uh, we'll hear, um, but before we'll hear you to make your presentation. Five minutes, please go. Uh, Mr. Chair, some corrections regarding to the uh, public notice. Because I believe we submitted a, an email earlier last week, which uh, eliminated uh, variant number five and we changed the variant number, variant number two. Do you have that on file? Because uh, at the application center, I believe there's a email. There's an email posted up there. 
regarding the email. Correspondent, there's a correspondent dated February 14, I think. Okay. Sir, yeah, we, we have to go, we have to go with the process here. First, I asked you for the, uh, y your name and address, which you did. Now, could you please yes. slowly tell me what variance you're changing and to what you're changing it to? Okay. Um, we are, okay. Here, we are going to elim eliminate uh, variance number one. Number one to be to eliminated. Balcony. Okay. To, yes, to no. Okay. And uh, number two. Yeah. The pro, uh, proposed building height is uh, the revised uh, would be 9.6 meters. 9.6 meters, yeah. Yes. And uh, also variance number five yeah. is also eliminated. Eliminated. Okay, very good. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Okay. That's, Thank that's you. clear. One and five eliminated. Number two changed to 9.6. Okay. So please, yeah. go, please go ahead. You have your five minutes and please go ahead. Okay. Uh, I will... Talk about the, um, the 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 variance that we have right now. Uh, number two uh, is uh, we're getting to the height of it. But uh, if one could, uh, if I could have the uh, survey uh, put up on the screen, please. Uh, second page, yes, A one two, because uh, we are the the property is actually located at an uphill slope. So if you one can look at the road, it's going up from the from east side to west side. And we are on top of the, uh, at the highest point, not off the hill, off the slope. So uh, when one look at the center line of the, uh, of the road, uh, the elevation of the center line of the road at our property, which is uh, 181.8 compared to uh, our neighbor, which is 182.1, which is about a difference of uh, 0.7. When you look at the average grade at the front of our, uh, both house, they are both at 182.7. So uh, that is actually created a difference between the, uh, that, that's more or less a technical issue regarding to the height because we are, the, the road in front of us is quite, quite kind of lower than our next door neighbor. And that's one thing. And secondly, regarding to the Sayak setback, uh, our Existing house right now, uh, the 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 setback is at one point five two on the east side where the tree is, and at one point two at where the west side is uh, closer to the house, and that that's why we we may we we're trying to keep it in that um in in the existing conditions, uh, which uh, is also that that's another reason regarding to this, uh, well lock coverage we are looking at. 32%, which is less than for, oh, roughly around 5% of the allowance, which is quite minor. And the front yard setback, which is actually uh, related to the tree, if one can, if you can see that the, at the east, no, west, northwest corner of the, of the property, of the our property, or the east north property, east north of the of 118, there, is, there are two huge trees. A uh, mature tree at the back of it, so that's why we set our house forward to uh, to kind of like uh, when doing the construction, we we won't get into or we we won't get into that much of the of the protection zone of that two tree. We're trying to protect that tree, and which is also the reason why that uh, we need to have the side access back because we we have uh, since we are not going to uh, further back to the back, so we're going wider. That, that's one of the reasons. And also number seven is also regarding to the uh, height or that is uh, actually the same thing as uh, the building height. That is more or less a technical issue since our, the center eye of the road uh, to our property is quite, is lower than the average. And I believe uh, all that we are looking at is quite minor because uh, we did eliminate it, um, uh, number one, which is uh, requested by most of the most of the neighbors and the and the councillor. That I, I hope that would help a bit. Okay. Okay. Thank and you. And I believe that's all that I need to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, we'll get back to you after we hear the other speakers. So we have sure. Kerry White, is he there? Yeah, yeah. Kerry White, are you there? 
<coughs> Jerry White. Oh, hi. Yes, I'm here. I just I've just been unmuted. Okay, could you? So, could you uh, my you st your name and your address, please. <coughs> yeah, my name is Terry White, and my address is one one nine Holcomb Road. Thank you. So, tell us what's your concern. Okay, so thank you for allowing me the time to speak. I submit that the application for variance be denied. Um, from my reading of the request, it appears that the owner would like to build a home larger than bylaws permit and that would like to have a balcony almost twice as wide as permitted. Uh, the request doesn't provide the reasons for these variances. I'm concerned that the city would allow such variances in the absence of any valid reasons. A valid reason for me would be to accommodate a health and safety issue or undue financial hardship. An un unacceptable reason for me would be that an owner simply wants higher ceilings or a larger balcony. Uh, the property is adjacent to a small ravine and path which lead to a park. The path and park are used by many residents who live in homes and apartment buildings in the area. It is a small pocket of nature within our neighborhood. This larger than allowed home would diminish the tranquil and beautiful nature of this small ravine and pathway. I would ask if the city is committed to sustainable and green initiatives. If so, then variance requests such as this, in my mind, should be denied. A larger home than allowed requires more materials to build it, more energy and heat to cool it, and takes up more green space. So in considering this application for variance, I think the committee should ask the following questions. Cannot the owner live within the bylaws and does it cause undue hardship for him or her? And number two, do an individual's desires trump community and environmental considerations? So I've not been involved in these types of proceedings before, so I may not be aware of other factors at play. But on the face of it, the answer seems straightforward to me, unless there are valid reasons based on health and safety or financial accommodations, then the citizen should be required to live within the bylaws. Um, I reflect, respectfully submit that the variance be, dec be declined. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see, let's see if there's any question for you. Any question for this speaker? <clears throat> no. Okay, we have another speaker. Paul Coase, are you there? Is he in? Paul Coase, are you there? Mr. Chair, Paul Coase has been unmuted. Okay, thank you. Mr. Cause, are you there? Paul Cause. Is he unmuted? Yeah. Mr. Paul Cause, are you you're unmuted? Could you please? Connect. <laughs> Mr. Chair, can we bring the applicant back? I'll try to get in touch with okay. the... Okay. Um, okay. Uh, Mr. Zeng, can you come back here, please? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Okay. Um, we, uh, we have just uh, the questions from Kerry White, but we don't have mm. the other one. There is another person listed. They may have questions too. So um, in the meantime, maybe you can address the questions of Kerry White. You heard what her questions was. Uh, she's questioning the uh, variances. Uh, well, I believe she, she's main question was regarding to the balcony at the back, uh, which yeah, you has that, been yeah. eliminated. And uh, oh, I did explain to you regarding to the height and the four height, uh, minimum four height issue. Uh, other things regarding to the ravine, uh, if uh, we could have the survey back again, at the back of our property, there are mature two light, uh, tree line right at the back of it. So it's, a, it's blocking the view from the back. Mm -hmm. So no one can actually see what it is. And on the east side of, it, of our property, which is actually a drop, it is a, a ravine lower, way, way lower than, than our property. 
which is a, a hill side slope with roughly about, I believe, four meters drop. Okay, thank you. So well, let's I see. don't see any. Is he on? Okay, so we have the other person. We can, can combine the uh, questions together. Mr. Paul Koss, are you there? Okay, Paul, you're on. Uh, yes, hello. Okay, can you please state your name and address for us, please? Uh, Paul Koss, uh, 115 Holcomb Road. Okay, so tell us what's your concern, please. Uh, my concern about the property is the number of uh, uh, bedrooms in the unit and the uh, washrooms in the unit and parking. And also about the trees that are on the property that will have to be removed. And I'd like to have some answers about why the tree was already moved from the front lawn. Okay. okay, that's it. Okay, well, uh, we don't deal with the trees here. If there is any question for the trees, we send them to, we send them to the, the um, to the um, uh, forestry. But we don't deal with the with the trees here. So, okay. So, so let's. Uh, uh, any other question beside the tree? Because if um, there, it, what about it, uh, parking? I don't know what about parking. What you're talking about? Which which variance you're talking about? Okay, how many bedrooms are going to be in this unit? Yeah, could you please have your all questions and we'll bring the, uh, the applicant to answer the questions. So you had the, the, you had the tree and what else? I would like some answers about the size of the building, about the, concern, about the size of the building concerned over all the property. And that's it? Yes. OK, thank you. Let's get him back to, uh, to answer the question. Any question for the speaker? OK, yes. Huh? OK, Mr. Zhang, can you please address those concerns? You had the concerns from before and from Paul Koz. See, see what you have. OK, for Paul's answer. OK, I, I understand that there are any, uh, always an uh, argument between developing and protecting the tree. So uh, right now the tree at the east and east side of the property, which is not within our our, our property anyway, which is we we, but that's our existing house right right now is sit right beside it, and uh, we are kind of improving our setback anyway right now because our existing setback is uh, 1.5 I think at the east side, and 1.2 something at the west side, and we. We, we understand that we, no matter how we situate the house, except we, we cut into the house, then we, we, we would have to have some kind of injury to that tree. That's why when we, we ever have that design in mind to design the house, so that uh, we, we, try to, uh, we try to cut down our house, I mean minimize the length of the house, so that we could protect the tree at the back, at the, way, at the rear of the house, to, to our neighbor, rather than uh, trying to protect the tree that we, we cannot do anything because we will, and it is an existing condition already because I believe the exi existing foundation is already there. And that is one thing. Okay. And regarding to the size of the house, we are, uh, the size right now we are having is, we, we are looking at 32% of the lot coverage and which is about, we are 2% over which is quite minor for most of the applications around the area, I think. And, uh, and the setback is the, the, the same though. So do I answer all the questions? Okay, thank you. I guess or so. Do you have any questions? Yes, I believe. If we have some one of the members questions, have, we'll have come question. back to you. Okay. Um, members? Mr. Chair. Any question? Yeah. Yes. Mr. Mr. Chair, I have a quick question. Um, I correct me if I'm wrong. I think I've heard earlier that the member remove eliminate variance number five, which is the law coverage of thirty two percent. But now in his explanation, he was saying oh, no. that thirty two is a moderate, very modest. Sorry, modest uh, number. So I would like to to confirm to see if I heard it correctly or not. 
I know that the applicant eliminate variance number one, and I know he modified number two to 9.6 meter. I've heard earlier that he remove eliminate variance number five. I would like to get confirmation. And also I would like to get explanation for variance number six. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Zhang, are you still there? Uh, okay, I, okay. On my notice, I, I I may be reading it wrong, but number five is the one that regarding to the un unexcavated porch and deck at the back. Am no, I? No, 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 no. Number five. Is, number five is the coverage, which is thirty percent. Uh, okay, okay. And you uh, said I, you're removing. I, I'm sorry. That. Correction. You said you're removing that. I, I'm sorry. I I am making a mistake there. Okay. I I want to keep the uh, lot coverage. But um, we are going to remove the uh, the DAC. So that would be number six there. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry about that. Okay. Number six you're removing? Yes. yes, yes thank yes, you. Yes, that yes, was yes. my question because um, city staff have a concern about variance number six, but you remove variance number five. Yeah. No, no, no. Number, no. number six. That's uh, that's our discussion with our city staff. Yeah, yeah. He okay. Thank Just, you. Uh, that, okay. I'm sorry. That's a good question, Mr. Okay. Okay. He meant number six, so he said number five. So on uh, okay. Regarding the number seven, uh, Warren's number seven, the uh, Fanya setback. Uh, could I have the survey back up, please? So zoom to the rear end of uh, the, the northwest corner of it. We got uh, a north, yes, northwest corner of the lot piece, where the big, huge, uh, mature tree at the neighbor's house. Northwest corner of the existing on the, yeah, no, 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 eight, eight, a one two, a one two, and uh, northwest. So go in, in, in. Okay, at where that uh, lot ninety five is, yes. So that at the existing house, where where the uh, northwest corner of our existing house, you can see that there's a, that there are two mature trees there. One is at a uh, point nine, almost one meter. Uh, diameter, and the other one is at point six. So the tree protection zone of that two tree, one uh, the one closest to the south, would be six point four five meters, and the other one would be three point nine meters. So when we situate our house, we try to keep us uh, the the house, the actual like uh, basement area out of that protection zone. So if one measure it, measure, put put a um put the put tree production zone of the point nine tree there, that would actually uh, if if I could go I might go back to our um, our site plan, please. Uh, sir, I think I th I think here you're just uh, with all due respect I think I'm confusing. You mentioned variance number seven, without going to the trees. What do you want to do with number seven? Number seven is the setback, right? That's what he said. Front yard. Yeah, yeah. front yard setback. That's, yeah. What do you want to that, do? That stays it? Because that, that way we, we, we push the house. Because originally our house is, uh, is further back uh, to fulfill the front yard setback. But so, because of the tree, so and we, we actually set the front. Excuse me. We, without, we set the house for a bit forward. Without going to the, to the trees. You, number seven, it, it said seven meters, you're asking instead of 7.5. What do you want to do with that one, that, that variance? No. Don't, don't explain anything about the trees. What do you want to do about that variance? Do I want to do? That's why uh, the variance that we have is, uh, is right now, if you, if you can look at our site plan, we are at the, at, at the far, where the existing Panther is. The number seven, it said 7.5 is the required, and the seven is asking for seven meter. Are you changing that, yes or no? No, we're not changing okay, that. Okay, so why, why mention seven? So please go ahead. All you do, you're, you eliminate number one. Uh -huh. And you're changing number 
number two to 9.6 meters, and you eliminate number six. Any other one you're eliminating? We were in the committee already. No, 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 no. We're okay. not. I'm not. I'm, I'm so sorry about that. Okay. Okay. I'm not eliminating any, any more of the, the variances. Okay. So, um, members, uh, could you show the, the thing? Okay, members, one is being eliminated. Na uh, number two changed to 9.6 meters, and number six is eliminated. Those are the changes he made. Any question? Any more question? Yeah. No? So can I have a motion then, please? Ms. Tarodi? Yes, uh, to you, Mr. Chair. I just, I think I understood what um, what applicant trying to say regarding variance number seven. I, I understand that because he wants to save the tree in the back, therefore they shift the building a little bit to the front. That's why he want to explain why instead of 7.5 meter, he now have 7.5 meter. That was my understanding. But anyway, apart from that, I'm ready to put forward a motion. Yeah. And my motion will be to approve the application with the following changes. Variance number one, it's eliminated. Variance number two, the proposed building height is now 9.6 meter. Variance number six, eliminated and also will subject it to the, to the one-stop condition that the proposal be de substantially developed accordance with the revised North Elevation drawing uh, submitted and received on February 14th, uh, 2023, and also 25, subjected to urban forestry memo. The letter you, you stated it, I, I didn't have it on my record. Okay, so. Huh? The, the, uh, the, on the staff report dated February 14, 2023, okay. there is a condition thank you yeah yeah that's 24 that's uh, and urban forestry okay thank you uh, second miss sankar seconding all in favor okay so sir your application is approved subject to those changes and the conditions thank you very much mr chair thank and you. community members have a good day thank you uh, yeah uh members Small break, 10 minutes.
So, ladies and gentlemen, we're uh, resuming our session. And here we have item number 26, which is 487 Whitmore Avenue, application number 26. And here we have Luisa Pinario Sanchez. Are you there? Hi, Mr. Chair, can you hear me? Yeah, hi. Can you please yes. state your name and address for us? Name is Luisa Pinero Sanchez, and my address is 487 Whitmore Avenue, York, Ontario. Thank you. Okay, so we have here a three-story dwelling, five variances, one letter of objection. However, we have one, two, three, three more speakers to speak for this application or against it, so... Uh, make us a very small presentation so we can hear them and we come back to you. Do you, do you understand? We, all we need you to make uh, just a small presentation as to why the merit of this application. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, I was muted. I'm, I am now unmuted. Um, and so I'm going to make a small presentation. We are requesting five variances for this new build which are mostly triggered because we are trying to propose a minor form of densification, which we deem desirable and appropriate for this area. For context, this is our first home in Toronto, and my husband Oscar and I are looking to grow our family in this neighborhood. We want to turn this into a multi-generational home that we can grow into and where my parents can live and retire in. So this is the plan that makes best sense for us, both functionally and financially, given the realities of real estate prices in Toronto. Now for the requested variances. Number one, uh, we are requesting for the maximum height of all exterior walls facing a side lot line to be 10.95 meters. I would like to note here that we are keeping the total building height below the 11 meter maximum allowed in the bylaw, and that this variance is being requested because the house is designed to have a flat roof rather than a pitched roof, which is consistent with recently built modern homes in the neighborhood. Uh, for variance number two, we are asking for a floor space index of 0 0.93, which is in line with previously granted floor space index variances in the Belgravia neighborhood. And uh, number three, we are asking for one platform on the second story with an area of 11.10 square meters. And number four, we are asking for side yard setbacks of 1.07 meters on the east side yard and 0 0.46 meters on the west side yard. Uh, these are similar to the existing house's side yard setbacks, as shown in the survey, and they clear the right of way for the shared driveway on the east side. I want to mention here that we extensively explored the option to make this a renovation to the existing house rather than a new build project, which, when consulting with our engineers and contractors, turned out to be too cost prohibitive. Nevertheless, these requested side yard setbacks are consistent with most of the homes built in this area and uh, we respectfully submit that these are to be expected in these types of narrow lots. Number five, we are asking for a front porch setback of 0 0.5 meters from the west property line. And many houses in this neighborhood actually do have front porches that do not comply with the current minimum uh, 1.2 meter setback. It is our opinion that the variances that have been requested have been substantially approved by the committee in the past. They are consistent with current redevelopment happening in the neighborhood and that they meet the four tests. Therefore, we respectfully ask the committee to grant approval to the variances requested in the application. And should you have any questions or concerns, I'd be pleased to address them. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll hear the other ones and see what, uh, what they have, and then we'll get you back to answer the questions, okay? Now we have here, Erdem Coase, are you there? Erdem Coase. Mr. Chair, Erdem Coz does not wish to speak at the meeting. Right He's nothing. No. Okay. Uh, Despina Desroches, are you there? De Roche. Despina De Roche. Hello. Yeah, this hi. Is Despina could, Caracas. Okay, could you please uh, state your name and address for us? Yeah, Despina De Roche at 2769 Route 505. I'm. Uh, I'm acting as agent for my parents who live at 489 Whitmore. Okay. Um, okay, tell us what's the concern. So um, I believe the variances are not minor. 
Uh, the proposal is not desirable for the area. My parents are in their 80s and have lived at 489 Whitmore for over 35 years. Wow. Um, they are in there, you know, they garden quite a bit. They enjoy the property and they're very concerned that the size of the new development will impact my mother's garden. Um, it will decrease all the natural light that they, all, they get in their house. Uh, they spend a lot of time in their bedroom, which is south facing, and they're concerned that they're not going to have that that light anymore. Um, as well as, um, it doesn't seem like the the new proposal uh, respects or reinforces the uh, character of the neighborhood. Well, I uh, I understand what you're saying, but just to to understand it, um, neighborhood, the building these, the light, all we're dealing with is the number of uh, uh, variances. If they didn't have these variances here, they were still built without coming to us and those problems may, not, may still exist. So could you please maybe address the variances and tell us which one is a concern to your parents? Um, I, I believe all of them will impact the privacy of their home, but my sister is also uh, a speaker on this uh, today, and she's gonna she's gonna give you some more detailed submissions. Is she, uh, she she submitted a letter. Yes. Yeah. Is she with you there? She's the next speaker, I believe, Joanna Caracas. Okay, so we have her here. Okay, we'll get we'll get her too. Thank you. We'll get her. Uh, We'll okay. get to, yeah. Hopefully, she'll have more uh, more precise uh, problems where we can have the answer uh, from the from the uh, from the agent. Now, um, it's been at the Roche, okay. And uh, for in this, in the meantime, any question for the speaker? We'll get to the other one. Okay, okay. Diana Coracos, Joanna or Joanna Coracos, right? Are you there? Oh, hello. So, hey, hi. Hi. So my, my name's Joanna. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Your address? Okay. Yes, my name's Joanna Carrasco. I'm uh, 489 Whitmore Avenue. Thank you. Um, and, tell, and so... Uh, tell us what's the concern. I believe... That, yes, the committee has my uh, letter. So in order for the variances to be permissible, they must meet that four-prong test. The uh, first prong is maintaining the general intent and purpose of the official plan. Now that requires, the official plan has a couple of unique elements. One is that uh, it, its uh, tree should be preserved wherever possible, suggesting that the demolition of the first story brick dwelling um, and construction of a new three story home dwelling that ha will have an FSI of 0.93 is a uh, well, there will be no proposed construction activity occurring within the tree protection zone of the existing tree. I note that their photographic material actually omits a fourth tree, which is closest to the um, east side of our property, which is visible in ours. So I think that there, you know, that this is a problematic submission that they've made. They've, they've indicated all the way across for four trees. Okay. Two on city uh, property. Okay, Miss Diana, in front of I'd, one. I'd like to help you out. Yeah. I don't like to interrupt yeah. you. Okay. And I want to help you out here because I want you to concentrate on the problems that you have because we don't deal with the trees here. It's not doesn't mean that okay. we, doesn't mean that we don't well, care. Yes, we are not dealing with the trees, okay. but the trees ought to be preserved in the official plan. So let's go back to the official plan. Right. The official plan requires that the variances fit into the pattern of prevailing nearby residences and they don't. You even have that photographic submission in the applicant's own materials and in ours. If you were to do a site visit, you would see. Uh, moreover, actually, just on the shortness of time, I ask you to look at the survey. So at the survey they've submitted in their materials, again, you'll see the new build is in is in by no measure um, in keeping with the prevailing standards. I want to talk, I'll, I'll move on now, if we can. That's not the one I'm talking about. I'm specifically referring to the one attached, the survey attached to the notice. Um, but just uh, um, 
I think you guys have all seen that. Yeah, so so uh, yeah, you're scrolling through that. Do you see, so if we pause there for a minute, you've got two story homes immediately in front and single story homes beside it on the other side. We're a two story. They're proposing a three story. So I, I just that their submission that this is consistent with the neighborhood is not correct. And um, their variances, if you look at them singularly or collectively, um, it will introduce an entirely different uh, type of home, as they say, one for whatever reason uh, um, they put forward, um, will serve their purposes, but not the official plan. Um, nor then there's a good reason why we have plans and bylaws. It's to respect the other people's property and enjoyment of their property um, and the higher goals of, you know, city planning. But if we go back to bylaw number one, they're suggesting that they exceed the, the requirement by 30%, and they're suggesting that that's minor. I don't, um, I don't agree. I think 30% will result in a building that towers or a home 2.5 meters over the maximum height. If we move on to the next um, um, variance they seek, which is 10, 80, 40, 41, I think you'll see that's an FSI. The maximum currently permitted is 0 0.8. They are seeking 0 0.93, which is almost the entire lot. This does not respect or in reinforce the prevailing density. This is a marked departure from the neighboring homes and the nearby residential properties and will serve to change the character. I then want to move on to the third variance. Now, uh, I ask for your indulgence. I said that that's only 65% more, but the reality is, is the, the, the bylaw requires four meters or, or permits four meters. They're seeking 11, over 11 meters. That's over that's 300%. I don't know how in any scheme that would be considered minor. Um, then you move on to the, the fourth um, variance. And there, these two, the fourth and the fifth, are going to have the most significant impact on us. You'll see they've identified them that, that we're the house to the immediate west. So they're talking about dispensing with the set by, by over 50 or almost 50%. And there's no reason to, you know, for this indulgence, there's no reason why they can't do a permissible livable bill. Hey, uh, Miss, Miss, Miss Caracas, with the, with the I, have, I, have to yeah. stop, I have to stop you because your five minutes are over and we have to move on. We'll get the agent back to respond to your questions. Could you summarize if you have your last, uh, last uh, question? Thank you. I do. So... You need to ask yourself if this fits is desirable or appropriate for the development or use of land. And I submit that it is not. I also say because of such negative consequences it will have and the transformation it will it will have. And they're also not minor. That's the fourth prong of the test. And I think that this application fails on those grounds. Okay, thank you. Uh, now we have um, all the speakers have been in, so we'll call back the agent. Uh, Louisa, uh, could you come back, please, and answer those questions and those concerns? Yes, I can certainly address them, um, how we respectfully disagree with what uh, Ms. Caracas and Ms. Roach has presented. First of all, we would like to thank them for bringing forward these concerns. Um, since moving here, we actually have developed a great relation relationship with Diana and Basil, their, our neighbors, their, their parents. And many of the other neighbors, we think that we actually share a common vision for the neighborhood and a common interest in maintaining an amicable relationship. Um, the house, as I'm going to show, uh, was designed to have minimal impact on our neighbors. Um, and if we can go to my supporting documentation on page five, exhibit one, uh, regarding the sun concerns, we took the time to address this because we knew that it was a big concern and we sympathize with it. But um, as was explained, there is no bylaw that directly prohibits casting shadows, some shadows onto neighboring homes. And, but one of the reasons why we bought this house is that it, it is in a south facing lot. So that we knew that redevelopment uh, would cause minimum sun exposure impact to our neighbors. Um, as the east and west elevation show, we have step back upper floor, sorry, that's for the letter, um, the response to the letter of objection, that would be the, 
Um, I don't know if you have it on file, but I I sent it to Irving and it's on the on the file on the website. Uh, but regardless, we have a step back upper floor um, stack to minimize shadow impacts. Um, as I said, we have included a sun shadow study, which shows that uh, during the usual growing season in Ontario, which is from spring to fall, there is very, very minimal uh, shadow impacts from around 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. during direct equinoxes, and around, yeah, there you go, 7 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. in the summer solstice. This is shown by the, the uh, pink shadows are the ones that change um, from the existing conditions. Uh, please note that these studies do not even take into account the shadow of tree cover. So we are showing the absolute maximum impact. We are also causing less of an impact with shadows than if we were constructing a two-story house with an upper floor that extends farther into the south portion of the lot as allowed in the bylaw. And 489 Whitmore also has no windows on the upper floor of their east facade. Um, now we can move on to the character of the neighborhood in the related, and the related point about the height of the house. It is true that there are many single-story houses dating back to the 1930s in this neighborhood. However, just focusing on our street, which is Whitmore, there are several three-story houses, 454, 445, 419, 391. This is allowed by the current bylaws. What this shows is that the neighborhood is also changing, and there is a clear legal precedent for such constructions. Indeed, our house fits the city's urban plan to densify single-family neighborhoods. And uh, for a deeper dive into the concerns regarding the variances, um, the first concern about the side walls is that the variance is not minor. As I mentioned during my previous presentation, uh, we are actually below the as of right height of the building of 11 meters. And this variance is triggered because the house's roof is designed to be flat rather than pitched. Um, I have some examples on page six and seven of this document, exhibit two, for similar applications of homes in the area that have been granted comparable variances. Thank you, yeah, and there's a, a few of them um, if you scroll down. Uh, the second concern is about sunlight, which we just addressed. And for the second variance, the concern is that we're asking for, for a significant increase to floor space index. And we respectfully submit to the committee that this increase to the floor space index represents a really minor form of densification, which is very desirable in this area. And we have some examples on page three of similar homes in the area that have been granted comparable variances to increase floor area ratio from 0.84 to 1.07. Okay. Uh, in regards to variance number three, uh, the concern is that we're asking for an excessive increase over the permitted maximum area for a platform on or, on or above the second story. And we also have examples in exhibit three or page eight of this document for similar applications of homes in the area that have been granted comparable variances. Uh, we also want to clarify that there is only one platform of this size on level two. We uh, are happy to discuss how we can mitigate you know, privacy concerns with the neighbors and have a conversation about that with them. Uh, for variance number four, the concern is that we're exceeding the maximum um, side yard setback. As I said, this is keeping to the similar houses built in the neighborhood, both old and new. Um, most of the houses in this area do not comply with the current side yard setbacks, including 489 Whitmore, which is 0 0.3 meters away from the property line. And I have examples on page four for similar applications that have been granted comparable variances. And for the concerns of variance number five, we want okay. to clarify that this variance thank is you. Thank you. Thank for you. the front thank porch. You. Thank, thank you. you. You finished your five minutes. Let's see if the members have any question, then you can continue. Uh, members, any question? Mr. Khan? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, my question through you is, sir, that the purpose of this application is new three-story dwelling. And sir, for that, uh, achieving the three story, the variance for building height has not been applied. And it is uh, very difficult to achieve uh, three stories unless we know what is the height of the building. And surprisingly, on north elevation A2, uh, I found out that the building height, which is a flat roof, is 10.95 which exceed the 10 meter uh, limit. And my question is, how, how can I uh, uh, see three story going up without not exceeding the 10 meter height? 
Uh, did you understand the question, uh, Miss? Uh... I, I think I understood it. I want to clarify that for this area, the maximum height is 11 meters, not 10 meters. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, at least uh, that's what the what the website of, of the current zoning bylaws show. Therefore, we, as you as you point out, we are going beyond the ten meters. We are at ten point nine five, which is still below the eleven meters. But you are exceeding ten meters, ma'am. I am exceeding ten meters. We are asking for a variance on, um, but but it, th what this what the variance that was triggered was for the side walls, uh, which, as the bylaw is written. Uh, the the side walls need to be lower than the exist than the maximum height of the building. The maximum height for this area is eleven meters above established grade. Mr. Chair, I would simply appreciate uh, to know that drawing A two is showing flat roof nine point ten point nine four. Is that correct? That's all I want to know. Correct. Yeah, that's what shows. Thank you, madam. Any other question? Mr. Han, did you have a question? No? Okay, if there's no more question, can I have a motion then, please? Mr. Khan? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Sir, I would like, uh, although there is no uh, staff recommendation for this particular application, but I find three stories that I just discussed. Flat roof, building height, which is not applied as a variance in this application, is not a neighborhood character. And variance one, exterior main wall height exceeds maximum allowable 8.5 meter. Variance two, FSI exceeds by 14%. Variance number four, west set, uh, uh, setback is only 0 0.46 meter. Variance number five, front platform is 0 0.5 from the west line. These are not minor variances, don't comply with the zoning and official plan. Therefore, I move this application be refused. Mr. Khan is asking to refuse the application. Do I have a second? Mr. Hunt is seconding. All in favor? Opposed? Mr. Tarot is opposing. So, um, Ms., uh, yeah, your application, sorry, your application is refused. So, s check with the staff what your next move is. Application number 27, <coughs> which is uh, 41 Linhaven. Road application number 27. And here we have Osren Stanbach. Are you there? Osren Stanbach. Chair. Yeah, could you please state your name and address for us, please? Yes, Mr. Chair. My name is Osren Stanbach. I'm at 15 Moreland Road. Thank you. So here we have, we have a three-story um, dwelling. Five variances. The staff report is recommending to refuse variance number one, which is three story. And we have letters of support in one petition. So I believe we have one more speaker here, but with or without speaker, we'd like you to make a five minute presentation and explain us the merit of this application and what is the, uh, what the staff rep report uh, mean to you, okay? Absolutely. So um, I'm just going to go over um, some of the variances so that, that kind of stick out in the public hearing notice. So I think uh, one of the ones that we should note is the length variance. Uh, the length variance uh, can be understood because it's being measured from a curved front lot line, which makes the length longer. And then on top of that, the, the line, as you can see in the site plan, uh, if staff can fit, if, uh, flip to the side plan of the uh, of the drawings on the side plan, that that length variance is is measured um, along a along an angled 
angled property line because it is following the center line of the property, um, which is really not correct. It, and on top of that, it's going to a back wall, which is going to be 48 inches back from the two-story wall. So it's, it's going to a one-story portion. And then on top of that, it's going, 16 inches is added for a small architectural feature that is creating the border for the back elevation. Um, so the two-story portion of the house, if measured from wall to wall, and we ignore the curved front lot line and angled length measurement, it's actually 18 meters. Uh, and on top of that, the, the two-story portion that is making up that 18 meters, it's actually staggered in the front wall. So, so it's not... It's really that 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 uh, number in the in the length variance is really not not accurate to what is going on with the actual project. Um, so so that makes the variance uh, minor in in my opinion. Um, now, uh, I would say that the height is also well within precedent in the area. We've kept the house uh, low to the ground. And the only reason we actually have a height variance in the first place is because that these plans were designed while the North York height bylaw was still in effect, which requires us to have at least a one in 10 slope for 25% of the flat roof area. We cannot get less, but if we eliminate that area of one in 10, 10 roof slope, we would not have a variance at all for height. And I think that's a key point to remember, and I'm gonna to get to it sooner actually now about the three story portion. Um, so, so th that, that's, I think, very important to understanding that three-story request. And really, we, we come to you, committee, uh, Mr. Chair, and, and members of the committee with our hat in our hands, and we're asking for this three-story portion based on the evidence we, we've provided. And if staff can flip to the supporting documentation, which shows the photo uh, of the map of other three-story um, houses in the area, this is basically the built form we have followed. Um, and and this, is, this is why we're asking for this. And, and I think it's really important to understand that if we're asking for this three-story variance, we have to take that into consideration that there is no coverage variance. There are no side yard setback variances. And, and that I think makes a, a big difference into what we're really requesting. And like I said, the height variance could almost not be there. We could work without it if that was the key factor that was preventing the third story. And we have great privacy on the north side because we only have one window at the third floor le level, no other windows. And most importantly, we are respecting the setbacks and we're, we're actually greater than the minimum, which is 1.2, we have 1.5 meter uh, side yard setbacks. Um, and then having uh, dormers and windows on the side of the house uh, is, is, is less of an intrusion in my opinion compared to having them at the front or the back where you can sit and, and have balconies and, and stare into many more yards. But that's really the key point. We don't have any objections. Uh, letters haven't been submitted from the neighbors that would be affected by this third story. But of course, I'm going to hold off until the, the other speaker uh, to, to, do, to make that statement. But I think future use, they're not provoking any variance. So uh, th that's really, that's really our, our position is that we, we ask you to, we, we defer to your expertise and your judgment and, and to, the, to the built forms that have been approved in the area. And we say, okay, can we build something like we're, we're seeing is, is being approved around? And uh, I, I leave it to you to any questions and I'm happy to hear uh, all the speakers and answer any other questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next one we have is uh, Ayn and Christian Bain. Are you there? Mr. Chair, we were, we were not able to get in touch with... No, they're not there. Okay. So, okay, sir, you're it. Um, staff, any, I mean, members, any question? Uh, we don't have any other speaker here. Just what the agent uh, presented. Mr. Hunt, you have a question. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, <clears throat> to the, uh, the agent... Uh, You've relied on uh, providing uh, several comparables uh, with respect to uh, your application. In looking at the map 
it appears that most of these comparables are on the south side of Lawrence Avenue and are not adjacent uh, to the uh, the address that you're proposing. And I guess my biggest concern is uh, variant six, which requests a a total of two secondary suites. And in those com comparables that you have provided, there not a single one of them uh, incorporated two secondary suites. So could you comment on that, please? Yes, of course. Uh, thank you through you, Mr. Chair. Thank you uh, to the member. And um, I would like to comment on that because there, there is a little bit of confusion about that because I'm actually not 100% sure what's going on with these rules regarding secondary suites. At one point, the zoning examiner who was looking at the file actually eliminated that variance entirely. And, and then we had already submitted for committee. And that's why there's a revised public hearing notice because I, I, I got into a panic and I thought, why is she removing this? Is this allowed to be removed? Is it not? I'm getting different information from different people. And basically, as I understand it, uh, they're going to start allowing, not having this restriction anymore on the number of secondary suites. Um, but but this, this was, this was a request uh, by the owner to to put uh, to 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 um, to go in line with kind of the mood of the times of having uh, having more housing stock availability. Um, so so you know building this giant uh, um, uh, home and not having any space for other people. I think that that is an admirable goal to provide that ca uh, capability of, of um, secondary suite living. And I believe that is the general direction that um, the, the uh, Ontario and, and some some opinions are going in. So, look, if if it's if this application, in your opinion, would be refused if these secondary suites are there, I think what's much more important than the secondary suites are, you know, that we get the built form and then we can deal with that in separate applications and see how it develops. So if you feel like that needs to be eliminated in order to approve the application, uh, I believe the owner is okay with that. But I just wanna point out that they're putting, first of all, it's not clear whether this even is a variant. So it could be that we're adding it with an abundance of caution, but I, I, do, I do feel like it, it kind of fits with the idea of, of building these size of homes although we do not have a coverage variance, of building this size of homes, why not providing that extra uh, capacity in them? So so I, I leave it, as I said, I, I leave it to your, I defer to your judgment and expertise on that. Okay, uh, Mr. Hunt, another question? Yeah, yes, to, uh, continuing on the question of secondary suites, uh, um, I acknowledge your uh, position that uh, there's been indications that these will be uh, approved in the in future. And what I think I heard you say is that you're out of an abundance of caution. You're asking us to uh, approve that in advance of any legislation that uh, that prescribes it. Uh, rather than waiting until there is legislation that does in fact provide for uh, more than one secondary suite. So uh, I'm, I'm a bit uh, confused as to which way uh, to go on this. Well, personally, I would, I would uh, through you, Mr. Chair, uh, thank you uh, for the comments again. Um, uh, member Hunt, but I would I would love it if we could uh, if we could um, stick with my abundance of caution and have this approved because I wasn't able to clarify this with the zoning examiner why it was originally a variance in her in her notices because we have actually exchanged like s s five different notices throughout the development of this application and then at one point in her notices that variance just disappeared and when I asked for it to be returned. It, she put it back, but again, I wasn't able to contact her as to why it was on there, why it was removed. So that is kind of, I guess, my main 
reason for the abundance of caution is that this is truly what the homeowner wants. And we would like it uh, approved uh, as a variance in this, in, in this way. Okay. Um, so we'll, we'll deal with this uh, here if they feel that, uh, that two, uh, two story, uh, two uh, uh, units is not the purview maybe here and you're okay with refusing that one, we'll deal with it. Now, before we do that, something unusual here. We, um, we had another speaker here that was confused on another number. It's not the speaker's fault, but it's our system that confused them. So we like to call her and just listen to her. We'll continue to this. It's unusual, but we don't want to leave them out because they were waiting and we, we messed up the uh, thing. Ain and Christine Bain, are you there? I am, I am still here, yes. Okay, can you please state your name and address? Because we... Uh, yes, my name is uh, Ian Bain. I'm at uh, 37 Lynn Haven Road. Okay, so you heard what's happening. We, 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 found, we looked for you. We couldn't find you. We moved on with the application. And tell us, we're still in the middle of it. Tell us what's your concern in a, in a very few, uh, few minutes, please. No, I appreciate that. So I have been online since two o'clock, and I appreciate appreciate I know. Uh, I you. Know. you okay. uh, um, there's, and there's a bit of a technical glitch, but uh, we are concerned because um, about uh, specifically about the uh, three stories, uh, which um, and and also about the second the second uh, the secondary uh, the extra secondary suite. Um, first of all, the three stories does not fit in our neighborhood. Uh, we are a, a neighborhood of, of two story homes. Um, so I don't believe that we, we do fit into a three-story neighborhood. And uh, um, I think having an extra height, um, extra height in the neighborhood does take away from, from that. I am very concerned about the, the, uh, the, 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 the extra height uh, and the privacy that we have. We have a fairly open backyard. Um, and, uh, I mean, there are some trees, but um, it does take away from some of that privacy. I think the further call is the further concern I have is particularly around density, population density, and and having a third floor, having a secondary suite, um, does allow for more people in, in a smaller space. And my particular concern around this this street is a couple of things. Uh, one is is um, there are no sidewalks in our neighborhood. Uh, and with no sidewalks, that means we have a lot of people walking on the street. And when they walk on the street, we have uh, uh, quite a few young children, um, younger than eight, uh, walking up and down the street that's not accompanied by adults. Um, and so my concern is, is, is with more population density and more traffic, uh, this is going to create, a, quite, you know, create a, a higher safety concern from, for, for a lot of our children. And, and a lot of our, our houses in the area do have uh, a lot of, uh, I, I don't know if they're, you know, daycares, but they're sort of where, where a lot of children being looked after by by, uh, um, by people. And so it does create a, a huge number, of, a large number of traffic of, of, young, of young children, um, I say often unaccompanied by an adult. So this population density uh, increase, uh, the extra height, the extra floor, the extra suite, Will will create that safety issue, and and we are very sensitive because the house right beside us has just turned into from a single dwelling home to a threeplex apartment, uh, and and so we're seeing this happening, and and you know it is increasing the traffic and increasing the the amount of cars on the road, and that's not safe for our neighborhood. Okay. I'm also very concerned about uh, the the um, extension of of use the the extension of use of property and drainage. Uh, there has been in the past uh, um, flooding, uh, particularly basement flooding from sewers um, in the past, and um, reducing the, the landscape and increasing the population density will increase the potential of further uh, potential problems with, with flooding and, and particularly backups that we've seen in the, in the past. Um, this is a single-family dwelling neighborhood. Um, it is it's very clearly a very single uh, very single family dwelling neighborhood and um you know it's a very uh, quiet neighborhood uh it's a, it's a good neighborhood and increasing that population density is going to create uh, and change that tone thank you okay. 
Okay, thank you. Any question for this uh, gentleman? Okay, Mr. Khan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you, sir, I want to know, as it has been mentioned that the uh, subdivision doesn't have sidewalk on both sides. Is it correct? Or is it only one side which doesn't have the are sidewalk? You ask, are you asking this? Gentleman? There, is, there, there is no sidewalk on either side of the street. Okay. So there's no sidewalks at all. Thank you. For, furthermore, it is. Furthermore, it also is a uh, designated Tron City of Toronto bike route, which also has a huge, um, you know, a lot of a lot of traffic because of uh, people using the bike route. I think it's bike route 31. I think. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any other question? And uh, the uh, the agent again, we're uh, it's unusual, but uh, we'll get you back. Could you answer some questions regarding the concern of this uh, of this gentleman here, Mr. Bain? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, absolutely, I would love to answer the questions uh, or the concerns of Mr. Bain. And um, the way I see it um, is that this is, it's, it's a little bit of a matter of opinion because I personally love density. I love what density does to this city. I love, I love the people that, that get mixed together and, and the results it produces. Um, and I think that's that's a little bit uh, the, the, the homeowner's intention as well. I, I know the homeowner very well, the homeowners. They're absolutely wonderful people. And if you knew them, you would feel the same thing. And if you knew them and you thought, okay, they're going to create two units and fill them with people, you know they're going to bring wonderful people into their house to live with them. And they're going to spread that, uh, that, that's, that character and that that personality around in the neighborhood. So, so that, that's, that's my personal opinion on the matter, is that density is a good thing, and I think that's, that's a little bit the, the, the mood of the times at the moment. And, and you know, increasing, increasing density is kind of one of the main ways we're going to try and tackle this uh, housing crisis, which, by the way, I, I'm not saying, I, I don't even know uh, this, this housing crisis, how it looks. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just being told that. Um, but I do know for sure that the homeowners are wonderful people, and it's my opinion that the density that will bring into the neighborhood will make it better. Um, and then uh, regarding the concerns about having no sidewalks in the road, I, I, I mean, I've been to that uh, neighborhood many times. Uh, it kind of sometimes feels a little bit like a ghost town. And, and I don't think there is, a, there is a, of course, during school periods, it's going to be a, a different story. But I think the streets are very, um, the roads are very wide. They could actually easily install a sidewalk if the city ever came to that. But I think they are wide enough to accommodate uh, cyclists, people, horses, <laughs> whatever. I, I think there is space for, for, for that kind of wonderful density. So... That, that's really that's really my response to those comments and regarding the issues with, with uh, flooding th that that uh, as as you as you will note uh, many times um, at the, uh, every session uh, mr. chair uh, that that is not really uh, something we can speak to in the planning stage it's something that has to get taken care of in, in the in the building permit stage and everything has to be done correctly okay thank you thank you let's see if there are any okay. Let's see if there are any more questions. I think you tackled some questions before, and we just added this speaker here. Do you still have any questions for the uh, speaker? No. Okay, in that case, I need a motion, please. Mr. Tarodi? Yes, to you, Mr. Chair. I was carefully listened to the applicant, the neighbors, and also read the city staff report on dated February 7th. I, I still, um, I agree with the city staff, um, um, staff report that the, I want to uh, refuse the variance number one. I would like to put forward a motion to approve this application with one, one condition that the variance number one, 
the proposed number of story, uh, which is three, to be refused and also subjected to urban forestry. Okay, thank you. Uh, second. You don't have a second? Okay, the, uh, the, the, um, the motion was to approve the application with refusing number one, which is number of stories. Do we have a second? No? Okay. Do you have another, another motion? Mr. Khan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I have also listened to the presentation by the people. And I, I agree with my, in the assessment of my planning department and the staff, and have refused variance number one. And I, I, I fully agree with them. Variance number one, three story, is not the neighborhood character. And variance number two, building height exceeds the maximum allowable. And variance number three, front yard soft landscape is 64% only which is 17% less than the allowable. And uh, variance number six, as my colleague has addressed, two secondary suites, they do not meet the criteria of the neighborhood as well as the zoning bylaw. All these are not minor variances, therefore I move this application be refused. I'm sorry, you, you move to refuse the application altogether? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Second, do you have second? Mr. Hunt seconding. All in favor? Opposed? Okay, sir, your application is uh, refused. Okay. No, thank you for your time. Okay, thank you. Next is um, Application number 28, which is 362 Lorraine Avenue, application 28. And here we have Mehdi Ajvand. Are you there? Mr. Chair, I believe Nushin is standing in for Mehdi as the agent, but they can confirm. What's that? I believe that Nushin, the next speaker after Mehdi, will be standing in as the agent. He will be speaking. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, I said it said the agent did not register, so that's the next one. Okay, uh, Mushin Muzaffari, are you there? Uh, my name is Mushin Muzaffari. I'm here on behalf of my client, owner of 362 Delore. Thank you. And your address, please. Your own address. Uh, I believe the committee has already uh, have my address. Uh, it's. Uh, 3429 Young Street. Okay, thank you. And uh, and you're the agent. Could you please, we have we have like one more, we have two more speakers here to speak uh, for this application. So we need you to make a presentation so we can move on to, the, to, see, to hear them. So you got five minutes and please go. Uh, before I uh, go through the variances, I should, uh, announced that uh, there has been some changes on the application. Right. Okay. So please. Variance number one. Yeah. Is changed to 0 0.6 meter. Okay. Variance number four. How about number two? It, it said also you're changing it. Two and three remains the same. Number four increased to 65%. Okay. Number five. Number five is eliminated. Number six. Number six is changed to 17.95. Okay. And number 15. And number 15 reduced to 41.3%. For three, okay. So everything is okay as per the uh, staff report, except number number two. They said that you uh, indicated that you're going to change number two too. Are you changing it? Yes or no? Uh, uh, the number for the variance remains because, as you uh, see in the uh, staff report, the uh, site setback on the east side is um, 0 0.9 meter for the ground floor. 
and 0.6 meter for the upper levels. Okay, so so uh, the number for the variance remains, but if you want to add uh, the sentence, uh, it's absolutely okay. I don't understand what you mean. Uh, you want to leave the number two as is, as is right? Uh, if you just uh, scroll down to the uh, staff report, as you see, it says uh, 0.6 meter to 0.9 meter on the ground floor. And the staff is suggesting that the site plan and the east side elevation be tied to the uh, application because uh, it's exactly what's happening there. Uh, the entire uh, basement and main floor uh, has 0 0.9 meter setback, but a portion of the main floor and second floor cantilevers by one foot. So the variance, the number for the variance remains at 0 0.6 meter, but uh, by tying the site plan and the east elevation, uh, the planning is uh, uh, making sure that um, the actual setback for the ground floor to m have access to the backyard is 0 0.9 meter. Okay, uh, I'll thank you anyways. I asked one question, I got seven answers. What I'm asking is, are you leaving number two as is? Or are you changing it as per the staff indicated that you want to change number six? One question, yes or no. Are you changing number six or no? No. Okay, thank you. That's all. Please go ahead. Please go ahead and make your presentation. Okay. Uh, first, I want to give you a brief uh, uh, history of this application. This case has been in committee in November uh, 2022, and it was refused as the planning was not supporting the case, especially the variances for the coverage and site setback. Uh, that was then uh, we were uh, retained as the designer to uh, design a, a new proposal for uh, my client. Uh, at the beginning, we started working with the planning as they were uh, opposed to the previous application to make sure that we understand their concerns and we accommodate them. Uh, and as a result, we came up with this uh, proposal, which has improved variances in regards to the coverage and also for the site setback, as you see on the elevations and also the site plan, the best site setback is uh, 0 0.6 and on the east side if you can uh, go to the planner uh, report the page that the planning uh, is suggesting to be tied to the application next page please the entire ground floor and the first portion of the main floor has 0 0.9 meter setback to maintain access to the backyard and the rest of the main floor and second floor cantilevers over uh, and uh, as a result uh, we worked very hard with the planning to make sure that uh, the new proposal uh, is in keeping with the character of the neighborhood and uh, satisfies the planning concerns. And we are absolutely okay to uh, tie the uh, site plan and site elevation to the application. Uh, like any other uh, proposal for a narrow lot, many of the requested variances are in regards to the site setback of the building, of the eaves, rear deck, front porch, and the side walls. And uh, this is a very uh, reasonable uh, considering the limited width of the property and the uh, very large uh, required setback, uh, side setback on each side to be set, uh, six foot. 
which is not uh, possible to accommodate uh, when the total width of the property is 25 foot. Uh, I, I, I would be happy to answer any questions. I just want to uh, mention that uh, we have several uh, supportive uh, letters from the neighbors and also the planning is supporting the uh, current application, considering all the improvements that we've made. Okay, thank you. We'll uh, have like uh, just two more speakers here and uh, we'll hear them and we'll bring you back, okay? So we have here Robin Buckman, are you there? Robin Backman. Yes. Okay, can you please state, can you, please state your name and address for us, please? Yes, Mr. Chair. My name is Robin Backman, and I live at 360 Delarane Avenue, which is the property immediately to the east of the applicant. Thank you. So please tell us what's your concern about this application. So I would like to, to be noted that I am supportive of this application, with the exception of variance number 14. I object to their proposal for a 16 square meter rear deck when the bylaw allows for a four square meter deck. Mm -hmm. A deck of this size and height will significantly impact my privacy as a direct neighbor, as well as the privacy of all the surrounding properties. There are no surrounding properties that have second floor decks of this size which allows all neighbors to maintain the privacy when in their back gardens. The original plan for my home, which, is a new, which was a new build five years ago, also included a deck of this nature, but in consultation with the neighbors as a gesture of goodwill, it was determined not to proceed. Instead, a small landing with stairs to a ground level deck and patio was built. I am asking for the same consideration regarding this application. Okay. However, if the applicant is not willing to amend the deck size to be in compliance with the bylaw, then I'm requesting a six-foot privacy screen be included, not only to the east, but also to the north. This will allow myself and all the surrounding neighbors to maintain our privacy within the realm of our back gardens. Okay. I would have appreciated it if the applicant had approached myself or any of the direct neighbors about this current application, but this was not done at all. I want to thank the committee and Mr. Chair for the consideration of my request. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, so that's mostly about uh, variance number 14, right? So Only number 14. Okay, thank you. We'll have the agent back to respond. In the meantime, any questions for the speaker? No. Okay, next, uh, next speaker is Barb. For late, for lot. are you there? Hi, this this is Barb Ferlat. I'm at 358 Delarine Avenue. Okay. So, um. So, I, so please tell us what's your concern. Yeah, my concern is also about the large deck. Uh, so variance number 14. Uh, when the when 360, as Robin was speaking, um, was built, uh, I requested the builders to lower the deck because they wanted to, a large platform deck which would overlook the privacy of my back garden. So they agreed to just have a, a, a simple walkout with stairs down to a lower level and a patio um, so that it would keep my privacy as well as they did put up a privacy fence uh, at, the, at the end of their, uh, their deck as well. The, sorry, the side, the, the east side. Um, so I think it would be fair if these neighbors would do the same thing to, you know, respect the privacy of the other neighbors so we don't have people, because this deck is quite high off the ground. I think it was going to be 1.8 meters off the ground. Uh, so it would be low, overlooking everyone's garden. Uh, and, and I think it's quite large because it's 16 square meters. Okay, thank so, you. Thank you. So you're also uh, okay with a, a screen there. Huh? We'll see what the members are saying. Perfect. And okay. if, a, if a screen is, uh, is possible. Okay, so we get back the agent. Uh, okay, uh, Mushin Musafari, please, can you, can you come back? Yes, uh, I'm here. Uh, thank you. Uh, I thank uh, the neighbors on the east side uh, for sharing their concerns. Uh, I just... Uh, 
I'm absolutely okay to uh, provide a six foot privacy screen on both sides of the deck. I just want to uh, explain what has happened here. Uh, in the meanwhile that we uh, redesigned this application and came back to the committee uh, since it was refused in November, there has been an amendment to the zoning bylaw in regards to the definition of the first floor. And that's why uh, many of the applications with the same character that uh, they had before are considered now as three story. And uh, consequently, the deck that is uh, basically located at the first floor is now considered at the second floor. Uh, and uh, this uh, variance for the area of the deck being uh, only four square meter <coughs> is basically a technical variance. Uh, big, uh, as a result of that change in the zoning bylaw. Uh, if uh, if uh, this application was heard a uh, couple months ago, uh, the deck wouldn't be a variance, its area would be okay. Uh, but still, uh, I understand that uh, the privacy is a, a concerning issue for everyone. And it's a mutual matter, uh, so uh, I'm sure that my client is also okay with the privacy screen. Um, and uh, I can uh, make sure that uh, six foot height uh, privacy screen is installed is installed on both sides of the deck uh, for the uh, entire uh, length. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So we'll see what the members are saying. If they're okay with the uh, with the st with the uh, screen or uh, or remove altogether. So, uh, members, any question? Mr. Khan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I would appreciate through you, sir, to know variance number two once again. Could you kindly tell us or tell me? Uh, 0 0.90 as recommended by the staff is okay. Uh, if you just uh, read the uh, staff report uh, carefully and uh, look at this east side elevation that is uh, that a staff is recommending to be tied to the application. If you uh, can uh, go to the last page to the east elevation. The whole portion that is uh, shown uh, with red uh, shadow is stepping back uh, further and has 0 0.9 meter setback. And the rest that is shown in blue color is at 0 0.6 meter. That's why the staff is suggesting that the uh, site setback be 0 0.9 meter at the ground floor and uh, the rest can be cantilevered. Uh, so we have uh, clear height to have access to the uh, backyard and the house is narrower at the front uh, and uh, the planning is uh, satisfied with this uh, because uh, it, it's in keeping with the character of the neighborhood and also it uh, satisfies the uh, concerns regarding access and distance between the homes. Uh, but since this is a narrow lot, every inch is uh, very valuable. That's why we came up with this uh, solution to uh, have uh, the uh, reduced setback on the second floor and half of the main floor and half the ground floor and half of the main floor uh, stepped back by one foot. Thank so, you. My, uh, and, my and it's point. clearly uh, the dimensions on the site plan also uh, clearly uh, indicates that. Uh, for okay, my, my next question, ma'am, is your variance number nine. 
you are asking number of stories three but you have not applied for the building height uh, variance how you are going to achieve three stories within what height would you tell me what the height of the building would be the height of the building uh complies with the total allot height and is less than 10 meter and as i explained this is a technical variance because uh, the definition of the first floor has been changed recently in january mm -hmm. uh, and the same proposal was two story just a couple months ago and now th the same thing uh, is considered as three story because of that uh, difference in the definition of the first floor. Basically, our basement is considered now as first floor, and our main floor is now a second <laughs> floor, which, which also uh, generates that variance for the balcony. Yeah. Basically, that's not a balcony. It's a, a rear deck um, that uh, any, uh, any house uh, contains one. But with this new uh, amendment, uh, the definition just uh, has changed everything. Yeah, yeah. What Thank you. What you're saying is like the uh, the two story and three story have to be mentioned as a variance, but it's basically a technical uh, uh, item because the first the basement is considered as first story, so it's a technical three. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Okay. All right. Okay, next, any other question? Mr. Tarodi? Yes, to you, Mr. Chair, um, I just heard that the applicant uh, in answer to Mr. Khan's question regarding the variance number two, the East Yard Yard setback, he said that this is what staff wanted and the way the staff put it, want to tie it to elevation and, and the plan, it will explain that if it, leave it like that it will explain i think it won't explain because this this variance uh, um when you can easily um it shows that it's 0 0.61 i mean the elevation is something that it shows that the second floor is just a little bit it's kind of like it's it's closer to the lot line um, um versus the ground floor so i think um, it will be clearer if we follow the staff recommendation with that respect. And another thing is that if we modify variance number two, then variance number 12 based on this also will be modified because if a rare deck on the east side, it's again closer. If you, if you just push back the ground floor, um, why the rare deck, it, it will be still on 0 0.61. Is, are you modifying that or? Uh, if you uh, go to the site plan that uh, the uh, staff is suggesting could be tied to the application. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate if the staff can show that. Uh, you see there are two uh, dimensions here. The red one says three feet, uh, 0 0.9 meter for the uh, basement and first seven meter of the main floor. And the blue dimension says uh, two feet for the rest of the main floor and the whole second floor. And uh, I think uh, this site plan that um, a staff, uh, the planning is uh, suggesting to be tied to the application, uh, satisfies their concerns and uh, clears the situation, what's happening there. Uh, so I'm, so finish. Uh, and uh, th th that's why the number, because uh, the, uh, from the zoning perspective, they uh, just mentioned one number for the site setback, uh, but uh, between the site plan and the site elevations, uh, you can be sure that uh, only seven meter on, on the main floor uh, and uh, 
the whole basement steps back and the rest of the main floor and second floor uh, is cantilevered. And it's, uh, I think, uh, perfectly uh, in indicated on the uh, both drawings. Yeah, yeah. I thank you for explanation. I understand your explanation. My question is that regarding variance number two on the on the same side plan, when you look at the rear deck, uh, the rear deck based on the number you shown, it's probably uh, from the um, east stop side line is is shifted zero point nine meter, three feet, based on whatever I can see. But correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, or or even yeah, it should be aligned with the main. Um, round. Since it's aligned with the main floor, uh, actual main floor, not the basement. Since it's aligned with the main floor, and the rear portion of the main floor has two foot setback, so the uh, deck also has two feet setback. But uh, uh, that's just. Uh, the practical uh, concern uh, that one foot for the deck in regards to variance number uh, 12 you mentioned uh, is not uh, is Sorry, not uh, what is in front of me what i think the deck is aligned with the with the ground floor which the ground floor as per your explanation is now 0 0.9 meter off from the lot line but on the variance number 12, the proposed rear deck is now 0 0.61 meter. If you want to tie it to the side plan, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, is the deck located on the side plan that we have it on the screen? How much is, this, is the distance of the rear deck from the east lot line on the drawing which is in front of me? It's 0 0.61 because uh, the ground floor that the planning is mentioning is basically our basement because uh, remember that the uh, because of that definition, the ground floor is now the basement and where the building touches the ground, the whole wall of the basement is uh, stepping back. But the rear portion of the main floor, which, is, which doesn't touch the ground and is not the ground floor, uh, is has two foot setback. And the deck is aligned with the main floor, which, uh, which doesn't touch the ground. So the, I think the uh, confusion is uh, because of that uh, main floor or ground floor uh, and uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. So we have the variances here. We have to decide on the variances. And uh, the design, we're going to leave it to the uh, applicant. So uh, are we having all the changes that's proposed? And see if you agree with them or you want to change them or you want to do one with them. So if you're, if you're, okay, with, if you, if you're okay with the numbers she gave you, so take the numbers and see if we are compatible with what she submitted. And if you're okay with those numbers as submitted, then you'd make a decision whether we want to accept them or not. The staff has those uh, all those numbers mentioned, and they also had a, uh, a, a, a like another uh, condition to build as according to the site plan and east elevation drawing. So with those conditions, and they have if you if you if you like them, fine. If not, tell me what you want to do.
Anyone for a motion? Mr. Hunt, you have a motion? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I would like to uh, move a motion that uh, this application, as modified by the, uh, the, the variance modifications in the letter from the Planning Department dated, I believe it's February 7th, together with the undertaking from the um, the applicant that they will uh, modify variance 14 by adding a six six foot screening on the proposed rear deck, and also by the uh, the recommendation from the planning staff that. The property be developed in accordance with the submitted site plan and east elevation drawings as shown on attachments to their report uh, and i believe that's everything okay so i would make that motion so the numbers the numbers uh, as far as the uh, uh, variance numbers you have all the things this yes. do we have do we, do we have all the changes in uh, in the variances yeah Okay, so the variances changes, which is compatible with the staff uh, said. So the the agent mentioned all the changes for the variances. So we we are not repeating them, except we're adding the uh, the, uh, the 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 six screen, and the uh, the the uh, to build according to the east, uh, according to the uh, uh, east and elevation drawing. Site plan, east and west elevation, east elevation drawing. Okay. Site plan, east elevation drawing. Okay. Do you have a second? Mr. Khan is seconding. All in favor? Opposed? Ms. Atarod is opposing. Okay. Um, Ms. Uh, Muzaffari, your, uh, your application is approved based on the all the changes that we that you mentioned for the variances and their numbers plus the screen around the uh, the uh, uh, the uh, number 14 as we talked about and also to build according to the uh, site plan and east elevation drawing okay did you get that yes thank you so much okay thank you now, I think you'll have to stay there because you're on the next one, too, I, I believe. Yes. Okay. Um, so, you, we already have your name and your address. And here, the agent, uh, Mehdi, did not, did not register, so you're going to be talking for the applicant, right? Yes. Okay. So, okay. So, Musaf Ms. Uh, Muz Musafari will be talking about this application. This is number 29. It's a new, uh, it's a new uh, dwelling. We have nine variances. The staff report again modify variances two, three, six, eight, and nine, and also built per site plan and one letter of objection. So can you please make a presentation before we get to, this, to the other uh, speaker? Sure. Uh, first, uh, about the changes. Yes, please. Variance number Two yeah. is changed to 0 0.45 meter. Okay. Number Variance number three is eliminated. Okay. Number six is changed to 66% and 90, uh, I mean 0 0.66. Yes. And 0 0.94, including the basement. And I, I explained that in my uh, presentation. Okay. How about number eight and number nine? Uh, number seven is changed to 4.49. Number eight and nine are removed. Very good. Okay. 
So that's that's very compatible with what the staff said, and you're even adding number seven also to change to 4.49. Okay, very yes. good. Okay, so please go ahead and make the rest of your presentation. Uh, I think this is a, a very uh, a straightforward application. Again, it's a, a 25 footer lot uh, with a traditional design. Uh, what we have done is to, uh, we are not asking for any side setback variance in this case, because on one side we have 45 centimeter and uh, since there is no door or windows on that side, it's uh, it complies with the bylaw. On the other side, we have more than three foot setback, which again complies with the bylaw. Uh, the only item that I want to explain uh, is the GFA. As I mentioned, uh, it's uh, changed to 66%. The FSI uh, is changed to 66%. But if you calculate the basement as well, it's gonna be uh, 94%. And uh, I, just mention this because of that new amendment, because uh, the first round of the applications uh, always uh, makes uh, lots of confusions for not only the applicants, but the city staff as well. Uh, this application has been submitted and reviewed before this new amendment in January. But since it's being held after that amendment, I'm, I just want uh, that number to be in the uh, decision to uh, save uh, lots of uh, time and energy and challenge for, uh, for the examiner and myself after, afterwards. And the rest, I think it's very clear and uh, I, have, uh, I, I, I would be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Okay, so we have one more speaker. Oh, Mr. Chair? Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Can I just clarify variant seven? It, is the change making the driveway wider? She changed it to 449. Yeah. 4.49, right? So she made it wider. Uh, Number can I explain that? Uh, there is a uh, email uh, sent from the planning to the committee uh, as a correspondence uh, that's uh, available on your file uh, because the planning uh, is aware of that. And uh, the reason of this variance is that uh, to increase the site setback on the east side and eliminate all those variances of uh, number three, eight, and nine, uh, we have pushed the house uh, by a foot to the other side and uh, consequently the driveway distance from the uh, site property line is more now and uh, because there is a mutual right of way between the, this property and the neighbor, the whole uh, width of the right of way uh, should be added to the proposed driveway, and uh, that's why. No. Uh, by this. No, uh, I think, by I, this. No, I think the staff mentioned here something very important. Uh, we cannot. We we can approve the application, the variances, if you ask for less. If you ask for more, we cannot entertain it because it needs another circulation. Therefore, if you want to insist on changing it to 449. Then we can't deal with the application. We have to refuse. We have to uh, to to defer it. Uh, you have to leave it as is, and you can deal with it later on. Uh, I thought uh, because the uh, staff has sent uh, that email and it's already available to the public on the file. Uh, whatever it, whatever it's... your email, whatever the email says about the concern of the uh, of the uh, rearrangement is not going to answer our question of the circulation that said you're going to be putting 4.19 so if you want if you don't want to put 419 then we cannot deal with it today so we're okay to just leave it as is uh, and then i will deal with that later right, right. okay so so in other words Thank you, staff. This is a very good question. So number number seven, we're not touching it. 
So you made, you made the change to number two, number three, number six, number eight and nine were eliminated, and we'll leave it at that and see what happened after. Okay, so, so let's see the, um, let's see the, uh, the other uh, uh, agent here, I mean the other speaker. We have Ali. So, Mr. Ali Al Ahmad. Mr. Chair. Yeah. Okay. Who's speaking now? I don't know who's speaking. It's, it's me. It's Atarodi, yes? Hello. Yes. Yes, sorry for interrupting you. Just another question, if it's possible, from city staff regarding the, the variance number six that the applicant requests that we add a sentence to it to, to, um, to mention that the Floor space index is 66, 0 0.66 times the area of the lot, and then add that it's 0 0.69, including the basement. I finding I find it very confusing, okay. but I would like to ask the staff if if we can change the wording. Uh, Mr. Chair, I can answer that. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't recommend putting that in. Okay. Thank you. Why don't we deal it when we come to the to the uh, to the approval? Because right now, in the middle of hearing the uh, the people, and after we finish that, when we get to the, the decision, then we can add it. Okay. So now we had online Ali Ahmad and Corey Allen. Are you there? Ali Al Ahmad. Mr. Yes, hi, can you hear me? Okay, can you please state your name and address and tell us what's your concern about this application? Yes, of course. My name is Ali Alamad. Um, I live at 259 St. Germain Avenue. Thank you. So I, I own the property with the adjacent uh, mutual right of way. Okay, so you heard the changes they may, uh, the applicant made. And based on those changes, do you still have concern? Uh, yes, um, okay. if you start the five minutes, I, I, I will provide a bit of history and then I, I, will, I will leave it to you to make the decision. Please. Um, so we, we reviewed the plans that were submitted on December 23rd uh, and we identified that the proposed property encroached on a mutual right of way. Um, we then submitted our letter of objection February 14. And um, I understand based on the, the staff report that, that the issue with the encroachment onto the subject right of way um, was, was already identified by the staff. And, and um, it appears that the, the new owners had modified their plans thereafter um, to increase the setback. My, my main concern is that, uh, well, one is the, the plans keep changing without a clear indication of what actually is the current setback. The latest plans that were submitted on February 17, I believe, um, indicate a setback of three feet, six inches. Uh, to be clear, that still encroaches on the right of way, which is three feet, nine inches. And so I, I don't have any other objection to their, to their proposed uh, property um, other than um, they, they still have an encroachment onto um, our uh, mutual right of way. Okay, and that's variance, what variance you're talking about? Well, it was the original variances with respect to the East property. Okay. Uh, so it was, it was original variance eight. Well, when you say original, we have here in front of us nine variances as dated. So go down to eight. As dated in, uh, in, uh, in uh, this. When they came here, number eight, huh? Okay, number yes. eight. Okay, so that number, that number. Okay, so that's one you're uh, you're questioning, number eight. And number eight, he was eliminated, so they don't asking for a more. I I understand. They they indicated to the staff. Well, the staff indicated that there's a mutual right of way, and so they eliminated that variance. But with the adjusted plans, their current proposal still encroaches on the mutual right of way because they indicate a setback of three feet, six inches, whereas the setback, according to the right of way, is three feet, nine inches. Well, I don't, I don't think we deal with the right of way here. We do, we, we do not, we can't deal with the right of way here. We, we deal with, the, if they didn't have these variances here, they will still go and build it and not to come to us. All we look at is the variances. So if these variances oh, I... is removed, 
then then I don't know what uh, what we can say about uh, the right of way. You have to. I think the okay. right the right of way has to be dealt somewhere else. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think. Oh, sorry. Okay. So, anyways, let's uh, let's see what the uh, what the applicant says after this here, and then we'll see what the members. And uh, Mr. Um, yeah. Uh, so, Mr. Ahmad, are you are you finished with your presentation, or do you want to say something more? Uh, no, the, the only reason I thought it was appropriate to bring it to the hearing to the committee is because uh, the staff had had identified the mutual right of way and and um, it appears that the staff was told that that it no longer encroaches on the right of way, whereas it does. Um, and so if you, if you say this is not the right forum, that, that's fine. We, we will deal with it differently. I think so. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll deal with the finishes here, but uh, let's see what the what the agent says after your your comment. OK. Let's see what they say here. Uh, Ms. Uh, Muzaffari, can you please come back and address the concern about variance number eight and what the staff wrote about it? Uh, yes, uh, as I mentioned, we have removed uh, variance number eight and we don't have uh, any uh, side setback on the east side. Uh, the fact is that my client was uh, trying to negotiate uh, the release or partial re release of the right of way with the neighbor, uh, which they didn't, uh, they couldn't uh, conclude that. Uh, and uh, that's why we originally have, uh, were proposing 0 0.6 meter setback, but uh, since they uh, didn't get to any agreement, uh, we, uh, increase the side setback to uh, and uh, remove the variance for the east side setback. Uh, and uh, when we submit the building uh, permit application, the examiner uh, will uh, double check the uh, will double check the uh, deed of the property to make sure that all the right of ways uh, and easements are honored. Uh, and uh, if not, the, a consent from the neighbor is required or a, a legal release of the uh, right of way is required. Anyway, as you mentioned, it's something that uh, is usually uh, dealt with after, uh, during the permit process. Uh, but uh, to, just to answer the neighbor's uh, questions, our intention is to honor the right of way. Usually the right of way is three foot six inches on each side, to seven foot in total. But if in this case it's three foot nine inches, we will uh, make the house uh, three more inches narrower to make sure that the, we honor the right of way. And uh, we cannot do uh, otherwise because, uh, as I mentioned, during the uh, building permit process, it should be compatible uh, with the legal description of the deed. Uh, yeah. As, as I mentioned, we don't deal with the right of way here. But just for curiosity, um, the fact that you remove the variance, you still have to deal with their uh, with their um, uh, right of way. Is that correct? Yes, and uh, as I mentioned, it's something that uh, is uh, brought up uh, during uh, building permit process. The examiner, the code examiner, will. Uh, ask us uh, to uh, provide a consent letter or legal release of right of way if we are not keeping uh, that or we are encroaching into that. But in this case, our intention is to keep the right of way as it is uh, because uh, they didn't get to any agreement and that's our intention and we will deal with that during um, permit process. Okay, um, members, any question? Ms. Atarodi? Yes, um, I have a question. Uh, I appreciate if the staff can uh, put on the screen the revised site plan that we would like to tie 
the decision if we decide on it. If if the staff can project that one, my question is regarding variance number seven, the driveway, that uh, on this site plan, the revised one, if you zoom in, the, the proposed site, uh, driveway is now three meters. Um, can you zoom in a little bit further? Yeah, on the yeah, I'm just want to check, double check the the width of the driveway. Yes, proposed driveway is three meter, nine foot ten. Um, so if the proposed driveway is three meter, so the variance number seven, the proposed driveway, which it said four point nineteen meter, is is in contrary to the site plan. The actual width of the right, uh, the driveway or proposal is uh, three meter, which directly goes into the integral garage, the proposed garage. But since there is a right of way on the side, uh, the examiner calculates the whole width from the uh, very from the very west side of the right of way to the property line, not to the edge of the proposed driveway. If uh, if we could uh, just uh, eliminate the right of way, or proposal was uh, wouldn't include the variance for the driveway width because it's uh, even less than what we uh, we could have. But since it's calculated from the edge of the west edge of the right of way to the side property side lot line, uh, the total width is a variance and it's. 4.19. Okay. Okay. Next question. Any qu any other question? Could you please bring the stuff back? Okay, thank you. All right. So, any other question? Yeah. And if there is no more questions, you have all, you have all the changes there. Can I have a motion there? Ms. Atarodi? Yes, to you, Mr. Chair. I would like to put forward a motion to approve this application with the following changes. Variance number two, uh, the proposed um, west side line is now 0 0.45. The variance number two eliminated. Variance number six, the, the proposed floor space index is now 0 0.66 times. Um, Variance number seven eliminated, variance number eight eliminated, and variance number nine eliminated. Also, I would like to tie it to the staff condition that the proposal be developed substantially in accordance with revised site plan drawing um, received on February 14, 2023. Um, and also, let me double check to see if there is any transportation. No, that's, there's no transportation. No. That's my motion. Thank you. Thank you. Um, second, do you have a second, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Hunt is seconding, all in favor? Okay, unanimous. Okay, uh, Ms. Muzaffari, your application is unanimously approved based on those uh, changes and conditions, okay? Uh, variance number seven is not eliminated. Uh, it uh, it remains because the staff said we, I cannot change the number, but uh, it remains as it is. Uh, but I uh, think I heard uh, in the motion that uh, Miss Atarodi said that variance number seven is also eliminated. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, not yeah. eliminated. Yeah, it yeah, just yeah. remains. I, I, that was my motion. I eliminate that variance. Thank you. But it's not possible because uh, the right of way is uh, added. To the, oh, hold a second, Miss uh, Miss Atarodi, you you uh, they asking for four four point nine and you meant to eliminate it, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. So this is our motion, and that's it. If you uh, if you have a problem, we'll take it up here. Once sure. we make a decision, we can't reopen it yet. So sorry, Mr. Chair. Just to clarify, it's refused. Refused. That, okay. Yeah, that's what you said. So that one is refused. That's what she said. She said is refuse it, even though it's only 4.19. Okay. Thank you. Uh, 
Another 10 minutes, yeah? What? T break, yeah, yeah. Uh, members, can, can we, we're gonna have just uh, like a five to 10 minutes break, okay? We'll come back.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to resume, we're going to resume the operation here. And our next item is number 30, which is number 16, Palomar uh, Road, application number 30. And here we have the agent, uh, Eddie Perez. Eddie Perez, are you there? Eddie Perez, I'm at 537 Rogers Road. Thank you. Yeah, we have here one, uh, uh, one variance. Um, just a second, please. Members, do we, we have here an application with one variance, one rear story. There is nothing else. Do we need the presentation here? No. Okay. Uh, Mr. Perez, we don't need any presentation. Do you want to add something? We move to the uh, committee. No, just it's very minor in nature and meets the four steps. Thank you very thank, much. Thank you. Okay. Members. Yeah. Mr. Hans, can I have a motion, please? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is a very straightforward application. There are no department comments or concerns and there's no neighborhood opposition. So I would move approval without condition. Thank you. Second, Mr. Khan, all in favor? Okay, thank you. Unanimously approved, Mr. Perez. You did, you did a thank very Thank you. Have a good evening. You did a very good presentation. Have a good evening. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Okay, next is number 31, which is 398 Lawrence Avenue West, application 331. Uh, okay, so here we have... Mr. David Hoffman, are you there? Mr. Hoffman, are you there? Application number 32, which is 53 Baycrest Avenue. Application number 32. And here we have uh, the agent, Mr. Richard Idells. Are you there? Richard Idells. I am here, Mr. Chairman. Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Okay. So I understand you pronounce this Idell in rather than Idells, right? Idells with okay. an acid, Mr. Yeah, Chairman. I with you, an acid, Idells. I heard you saying it before. Okay. So here we have a... Um, a few additions, six variances, transportation report has no objection. We have 15 liters of support and the normal condition. And another one came today. Another one came today across the street of support. One more. I'm sorry. I'm sorry? Uh, another letter of support came today. Oh. Uh, uh, someone lives across the street. Mr. Another letter of support. Okay, Mr. Adele. Uh, we don't we don't go by reference how many people I uh, just mention it I didn't even have to mention it because you know uh, okay sorry. we can have so many against our support we don't we don't go by the number of people who who for it or against it we go by the four test of the planning act so we have here we have here six variances we're going to look at them so could you please and the normal condition we move on but we have one more person here to speak therefore we need you to make a very small presentation. Okay, the first variance is the, uh, it's, it has to do with the, uh, the roof over the front uh, entry porch where there's a little bit of an overhang. So according to the bylaw, the, over, the, the roof should stop right at the edge of the, of, of the porch. And we like to give, you know, uh, eight inches, uh, eight or 10 inches of overhang around just so the water doesn't go on the porch, goes off. So that's, that's what that, that, that's about. Um, the second variance is uh, existing. It's a driveway of 3.1 meters, and that's basically what's what's existing there. And and you had, uh, uh, excuse me, a proposed driveway is 3.76, uh, right? Which is existing driveway. It's more than the allotted, and we all already have a letter from transportation that they approved of that. Number three is the lot coverage, which I believe personally it's uh, it meets the test of the, the of the planning act. It's minor, basically 33 uh, 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 percent. 
3% more than allowed. Uh, number four is um, also, I believe it's, um, I believe it's minor. Uh, we are proposed 17.7 meters in length. Uh, for detached house, it has to be uh, 17 meters. Uh, that's what's required. Uh, two more, uh, two more, uh, uh, two more points. Number number five is the uh, requiring parking space of 3.2 meters, and this is going to be three. Uh, it should be 3.2, but it uh, it's going to have 3.1. It's going to be a little bit less, and that's because we're just trying to keep with the existing. Um, I mean that would uh, that would be easy to change if the, if the if the committee wants to make it 3.2 meters, no problem with that. But anyway, the last one is on the minimum side yard is just uh, keeping with also keeping with the existing, which is 1.3 meters. And since we're doing a second floor over it, so um, that's that's why um, you know we're we're just following the existing side side yard setback of the ground floor, so it's being mimicked in, on the second floor. And those are the variances, Mr. Chairman. That's it. That's it. Thank okay. you. Okay. We'll just see what the other uh, person have to say here, and we'll come back to you. Uh, is Mr. Thank you. Mr. Janaud Young there, please? Mr. Chair, I was not able to get in touch with. No. Okay. Yeah. So finish. Okay, members. Uh, there is no no other person here except what you heard, and uh, any question for this uh, speaker? There. Uh, Six minor variances, and uh, if there's no question, I'd like to have a motion, please. Ms. Sankar, is that a motion or uh, or uh, motion? Mr. Motion, Chair. please go ahead. So, yes, please go I, ahead. I think that uh, this uh, application is self-explanatory. Um, whilst we don't consider uh, who's for or against the, the multitude of uh, support that he has, as well as uh, transportation having no concerns, and, and me looking at the variances and be feeling it's deemed minor, I think I'm in favor of this application wholly. I'll put forward a motion to approve the application and making it subject to forestry. Thank, Thank you. you. Second, Mr. Hunt, all in favor? So sorry, before uh, sorry, there is no transfer. Uh, there is no forestry. No the forestry. number has a typo. But we are on thirty-two. No, no forestry. Winter two. There is forestry, yeah. Huh? I, I know, but the number of the report. If you look at the fifty-three Baycrest Avenue. Oh. Would you please double check that? Sorry, sorry for interrupting. Do, do we have a? No, it's a good thing you said it. Do we have 53 Baycrest Avenue on the list is number 33, but on, we, are, we are working on application number 32. 32. So there is no forestry. There is a typo for the number. Is there forestry? Yes, you are right. No forestry. So 53. We are on application named 53 Baycrest Avenue with no forestry. 32, 32, I have it. There is, I don't see any forestry, no. There's no forestry. Hold it, hold it. But we are, we are 30, oh, we're, we're 53 Baycrest Avenue, right? That's what we're talking about right now. Excuse me, we're in committee now. Let us, let us finish here first. Do, do you have any, um, uh, Ms. Sankar, could you come back here, please? Can you remove I'm it? here, Mr. Chair. I know. No, I'm, yes. I'm, I'm talking about the uh, staff here to remove. Okay, now I see you. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, so uh, what you want to do? You want to remove forestry? No, no forestry. I, I shall amend my uh, motion then, because I, for some reason, I had it noted as forestry, but I realized that was for a different application that I wrote okay. down the name for, and uh, my error. So I'll, I'll amend and I'll approve as is. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I didn't have any forestry either. Okay, so Ms. Sankar is uh, is uh, approving as is. Mr. K Mr. Hunt seconding. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay, sir, your application is unanimously approved, and there is no conditions. Okay, now can we go back to number 31? Uh, Mr. Chair, please yeah. be advised that the agent for this item is Yosa Somalingam. 
the last person, and David Hoffman is not going to be speaking for this item as well. It will not be speaking. The agent, which is Yosa. Yaso, sorry. Yes, that is the agent. Okay. And everybody, everything is so, so unknown and known. Okay. Uh, Mr. Uh, Yasu Sumalingam, are you there? Hello, Mr. Chairman of the committee. My name is Yasu Sumalingam. I'm the authorized agent on this application. Thank you. Okay. Uh, give me two seconds here. That's uh, variance number 31. I mean, it's uh, application number 31, which is 398 Lawrence. We have a new dwelling, six variances. There is a staff report that asks for modifications per you, as you made the reference. And let me just see, because we have, we have some, one more speaker, we need you to make a presentation anyways. So first thing I'd like ask you to think, please, could you give us the changes that you, you want to make? the number of the variants, and what you're changing it to. Okay, the, the item number two, uh, number two variants uh, from 11.15 uh, height, we are reducing to 10.55. So, sorry, you're raising so how, how much? How much? I'm reducing that to 10.55. Item number two. Okay. Number three. And and number three, uh, uh, reducing from 9.02 to 8.87. 8.87, okay. Any any other change? That's it, yeah? Those, those are the two changes. We work with the planning department, and then we worked out um, the heights and try to make it work. Uh, this, is, this is a corner property, and um, uh, we had uh, to reduce the traffic. We are putting the garage on the side. Yeah, uh, they've been the, the less uh, consistency um, um, uh, uh, street, uh, Ludbury uh, Street uh, instead of Lawrence. So when we put uh, this on the side, uh, there are a number of variances are being triggered. Uh, and uh, uh, we are asking uh, for the side yard setback on, on one side, which is uh, uh, um, uh, when you look at this drawing on your left hand side and the other street side, we are okay with the setback and <clears throat> the height we are coming to that because even though it's a corner, my driveway is accessing from the Ledbury Street, the heights are calculated from the Lawrence Avenue side, which is due to the grading issue, it's coming at different numbers. It's kind of a technical thing, that's why it's coming uh, to those variances. Other than that, um, <clears throat> We are pretty much complying with the, uh, all the setbacks in the rear yard setback. Even we are much less than the maximum setbacks allowed. And the front yard setbacks also, we are more than what's been uh, allowed uh, compared to the neighbor's uh, house. And um, um, uh, um, the, um, the, uh, the overall design is done such a way that the garage is coming from the side street, which, which will be less... Uh, um, traffic issue compared to the garages being from the Lawrence Avenue, which is a main street. Okay. That's it? Yes. Okay. Now, do me a favor. Could you please go over number two and slowly, because I don't get, I don't get it. Number two is, is usually asking for... Number, hold a second, please. Number, number two allowed is 10 meter and the proposed height of the building requested is 11.15 meters yes now we have reduced that to 10.55 so oh. my request is 10.55 10.5 okay i i, I heard 11.55 okay 10.5 yeah. correct okay yes, sir. all right so we'll see what the other speaker if there is anyone here and we'll come back to you so do we have okay. here fong Wei frank chan are you there is he there? Uh, my name is Frank, uh, Frank Chen, um, Fong Wai Frank Chen, and I'm from 449 Glengarry Avenue. Thank you. Uh, so tell us, what, you, tell yeah. us what your concern, please. 
Okay, so I'm gonna go by each variance. So the first one is uh, the proposed coverage is 39.7% versus the bylaw, which is 30% of the coverage. The larger coverage means uh, invading not just my privacy, but uh, surrounding neighbors as well, because uh, the lot size doesn't change, right? So a bigger house means that it has to push uh, either push to sides, so that would invade uh, all the surrounding neighbors' uh, privacy. And on the second variance, uh, the proposal proposed height, uh, which uh, the um, the owner uh, now changed to ten point five five um, because of the houses uh, around uh, in the like surrounding houses. Um, there. The heights of the surrounding houses are not that high either. So, like, uh, it will be blocking uh, the some the natural sunlight for uh, our our properties as well as um, our neighbors' properties. And the third uh, variance is the uh, the proposed height of the. Oh, actually, no. Sorry, I'm just gonna go straight to the. Uh, variance number four, the proposed number of stories is three. The three-story houses are out of the pattern in the neighborhood, uh, especially uh, where the property is at, uh, which is a corner lot of uh, Lawrence Avenue and Lambert Street. Uh, and number five, uh, the required minimum side setback is 1.8 meters. Uh, the proposed west side yard setback is 1.22 meters. Um, this is just simply a privacy concern, and um, for the for variance number six, uh, uh, the rear platform projects to be three point zero five meters uh, from the rear main wall. Again, this is just another privacy issues, and yep, those are my concerns. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we'll get the agent to respond. In the meantime, any question for this speaker? Okay, so we'll get the agent, and um, okay, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Frank Chan, can you can you come back here, please? Sorry, my name is Yasso Somalingam. I'm the agent on this application. Um, I understand yeah, yeah. Uh, the so, neighbor yeah. neighbors' comments. Yeah, yeah. So you're you're yeah, non number thirty one. So could you please tell me uh, one question here? Before we go on, it said variance number four is two story, uh, and uh, your your uh, the the maximum two story you bring three story. Now the the application says that uh, to construct a new two story dwelling, could you please explain this? What's happening? Yes, if we, uh, yes, it's uh, it's again the technical um, um, uh, variance. Uh, uh, this house is being applied as a regular house in the neighborhood. Uh, it has one basement level, one uh, the basement level and the garage level are pretty much the same. Uh, the basement is a little bit deeper. The garage is at the grade with the eight foot ceiling. And then we have a ground floor level, which is uh, above the garage and uh, above the basement. And then the second floor level, which is the top floor where all the bedrooms are. So basically, there's only three levels. But uh, due to this technical uh, variance, which is triggering as a, uh, the basement is coming as a ground floor, according it. to the yeah. variances being identified these days. So that's why it's coming. But we are not putting any third floor. That means there's no four total of four floors in this application. Total okay. number of floors are three. One is basement. And the other two are above ground. Got it. You got it. Yeah. The, uh, it's a technical three story because the basement is considered as first story. Got it. So, That's correct. Yeah. So um, now, the, um, could, you, could you address the concern of this uh, gentleman who just spoke? Yeah. So the, the other variants are the, the side yet set back uh, from the neighbor. Uh, my client has consultation with that particular neighbor, and then he has no concern on that. And then that's why we went with this proposal so that we have more space on the other side where the Ledbury Street side uh, and uh, that has more, um, even the existing house is more closer to Ledbury Street. 
but we have provided more clearance there so that there's, there's more visibility on the corner intersection. And also we push the house further back, uh, even though uh, the, the minimum setback at the front is only uh, 1.5 meters and we are providing with 3.6, that means extra two, two feet setbacks on that and a two meter setback on that. And the rear yard setbacks, if you look at it, even the deck is coming inside the uh, rear yard setback. It's not even, even the deck is not protruding uh, uh, beyond the rear yard setback line. Now, regarding the height, if, if we look at the, the, why the height variance are triggering here, is because the heights are, uh, are measured from the front uh, street, which is Lawrence Avenue side, and there's a level difference between the Lawrence Avenue side and the rear uh, uh, um, where the garage is on the other side, which is uh, on the Ledbury Street. It's about two, two, uh, two feet level difference. So when we do the calculation on the heights, it's, it's, it's uh, creating these variances on the height. Otherwise, we wouldn't be asking for this height variance. If we had to put this garage on the Lawrence Avenue, and my heights will be fine. I don't think I would be even asking for any of these height variances. But since the, the garage is coming off from Ledbury Street, and there's a two feet level different with front of the Lawrence Avenue to the the uh, almost the, the midpoint of the garage, uh, that's why we are triggering these variances. Now, um, the 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 side the shadow wise, I don't believe uh, there's going to be casting any shadow. This these are slope roof uh, uh, except a small portion in the middle. So any anything this extra two feet uh, the height variances it it will never create any kind of a shadow and uh, this particular neighbor who is opposed is uh, further away from this and my client has contacted those two immediate neighbors and then they have no objection on this any of these variances. Okay, thank you. Um, members, any question? Miss uh, Tarodi, please. Yes, through you, Mr. Chair, I, I would like some explanation regarding first variance, the lock coverage of 39.7% versus the 30%, which is uh, uh, the maximum permitted. Oh, you want the uh, uh, explanation from me, sir? The th the, we, we, we work with the planning department. It's just to get the fairly decent size of the garage on this, uh, sorry, house on this lot. We had to go at least at least 39 percentage of the coverage. See, even if you look at that coverage, look at that how far we are away from the front yard setback, how far the house is away from the rear yard setback, and then we still uh, barely reach that mean 39 percentage. And the, uh, compared to the neighborhood in this this area, uh, there's even the coverages were uh, approved even higher than uh, 40 percent, but we restricted our coverage less than the 40%, which is 39 points with the planning department's uh, consultation. Okay, thank you. And um, I just, yes, I just have a uh, have a question uh, from, from you, Mr. Chair, to just confirm if this application, we have a, a forestry condition number one uh, condition or, or no? Well, is there forestry listed on condition? Let me, let me check. I think there is. Yeah, we have we yeah. have forestry yeah. conditions. Yeah, so there is forestry. Yeah, so you have to make forestry condition. The other one didn't have it. This have it. What does it say there? Condition what? One. One. Okay. Yeah. It said condition number one. Okay. So any um, any other question? If not, maybe uh, can I have a motion then? Ms. Sankar, you have your hands, please. Yes, through you, Mr. Chair. You know, I've heard what the applicant has had to say and I can understand, um, you know, what has sort of triggered uh, the variances. And I think he's right in the sense that this is a bit of the character of the neighborhood as well. So I accept all of those explanations as well as, um, uh, the changes that he's made here uh, today in trying to meet the staff report. So I'll put forward a motion to approve this application and I'll make it subject to the changes that he's made here today. I won't repeat them and it is subject to forestry. And um, uh, that's my motion. Um, if if uh, also just to, to tie it to one aspect of the February 13 staff report that it be developed in accordance with the elevation drawing submitted to the committee. Thank you. Thank you. 
And uh, you said you won't repeat them, but you agree with number two and number three changes, right? Number two and number three. Yes, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Second, Mr. Khan seconding. All in favor? Opposed? Mr. Tarot is opposing, and the rest is okay. So, sir, your application is approved based on the changes you made in you made it, and subject to forestry condition number one, and subject to developer elevation drawings. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thirty-three. Hey, three more applications. Okay, application number 33, which is 29 uh, Chipping uh, Road, application 33. And here we have jo Mr. Joseph Bataglia, are you there? Joseph Bataglia. Hello? Hi, could you please state your name and address? My name is uh, Joseph Bataglia. Okay. My address, address is 1050 uh, McTickle Avenue, uh, Scarborough, Ontario. Thank you. Okay, so we have, this is a new dwelling. Uh, staff report, yes. staff report is, uh, is indicating that you made some changes and they asked for yes. a development of, uh, to, to develop your east and west elevation drawings. Transportation yes. has, has no objection recommendations only as per their letter of February 16. And we have uh, three letters of objection and we have three people here registered to speak. So before we, um, before we hear them, we'd like, to, uh, we'd like you to give a please a uh, presentation, five minute presentation and cover the changes you'd like to make. Okay, um, we are uh, in, in conjunction with uh, consultation with city planning. Uh, we're eliminating uh, variance number one regarding the front yard uh, landscaping, um, so we're we're not uh, we're not uh, having it. Don't need a variance for that. Okay. Uh, we're eliminating variance number two regarding the front yard uh, uh, soft landscaping under zoning bylaw five six nine two zero one three. It sounds like it's the same variance. I'm not sure, but nevertheless, uh, we're eliminating that. And we're eliminating the, um, the side exterior main wall height. Uh, uh, Number seven. To be uh, front, yeah, to be uh, eight eight point zero uh, meters. Yeah. Before you go to the details. That's for the elevation. You're eliminating huh? number seven. Yes or no? Uh, number seven will no longer be needed. Uh, so we we're, we are eliminating it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, could you please, could you We're really following the required, uh, Okay, uh, Would, uh, do me a favor, without explaining or explaining, tell us the changes. You eliminated number one, you eliminated number, yes. number two, and what number seven you yeah. do? And number seven. What, you eliminated? And, yes, we have eliminated number seven, hello? Thank you. Thank you, so the three are eliminated. So please go ahead, make your presentation. Um, we um, are requesting variants of um, uh, we're requesting variances in, in the uh, 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 oh yeah the uh, uh, combined width uh, combined width of the uh, of the what, what's this six meters yes six meters both combined width of all. We're, we're revising the combined width from six meters of the driveways from six meters to 7.52. Uh, sorry, which one is that? Uh, variance number three. Yeah. Okay, we're, uh, we're uh, asking for a variance from six meters to 7.52 meters. Yeah. Uh, number four. Oh, you're the, not changing. The 
You're not changing anything there, huh? No. 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 Thank you. Please go ahead. Okay. Maybe if I thought just say we're not changing number four. Okay. We're not changing number five. We're not changing number six. Number eight and nine. We're not changing. Very good. Okay. Yeah. Hi, I'm just with Joseph. Hello. Hello. Hi, I'm just with Joseph here. We're just uh, proposing a new development. Uh, clients would like to uh, essentially propose their dream home. So some of the variances we'd like to keep. We've been uh, communicating with city staff. And Excuse me. Is that, is that, is that Miss uh, Tarodi who's speaking? No. No, it's with. It's me and Joe here. Hell yeah. Me and okay. Joe Battaglia here. Okay, so yeah. please go ahead. You both speak as much as you want. After five minutes, yes. we're going to move to somebody yes. else. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I understand we have five minutes. So, yes, we are representing the client here. We've been uh, communicating with city staff. We have agreed to their recommendations to eliminate the front yard and uh, soft landscaping variances. And we have reduced the exterior main wall to be eight meters as per their request. However, we are keeping the lot coverage to be proposed as 31.81 uh, percentage. And the rest of the variances for the setbacks, the side yard setbacks, we are keeping as well. Okay, so I just want to uh, summarize here. All you're doing eliminated in one, two, and seven. The rest is stay there, right? One, one, two, and three we have eliminated. However, I have communicated with city staff and variance number seven is no longer required as for our zoning examiner as well because we have eliminated the front yard landscaping setback. Yeah, we understand. It was eliminated, so period. That's okay. Yeah. 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 Yes, yes, exactly. Got, okay, so so number one, two, and seven were eliminated. So we understand that. Mr. Anything Chair. Else? Sorry. Three. Number three as well, because we reduced the main wall height to be eight meters as their per request. Okay, That's very good. good. Okay. okay, number three is yeah. eliminated too. Okay. All right. Exactly. We're just pulling the east side elevation. As recommended. Drive. As recommended, yes. Very good. Okay. Okay. Mr. Chair, can we get her name, please? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have her name here. But, but can, you, can you please state your name as well? For sure. It's Helia Motafari, and I'm with Joe Battaglia here. Thank you. Yeah, you read Joe Battaglia. Yeah, she's Joe Battaglia. Okay. All right. We're just sitting beside. I, uh, I, 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 listen, with all due respect, we're getting confused here. I, you two people speaking, could you please state the name of each one separately? Yes. I'm Halia Mozafari. Okay. And I have beside me Joseph Battaglia. Yeah, Joseph Battaglia, he, th he told us who he is. And what's your address yourself? Yes, 1050 McNichol Avenue, You're Unit also there. 14. Okay. Very good. Okay. Yes. So, so we got both of you, and we got the thing you're eliminating three, one, two, and uh, and seven. Okay. Anything else before we call the other people? No. Okay. Thank you, Lisa Saricini. Are you there? Lisa Saracini or Saracini. Yes. Good evening. Okay. Thank you. Can you please state your name and address, please? Yes, this is my name is Lisa Saracini, and I'm at 31 Chipping Road. Thank you. And tell us what's your concern. You heard what they said. They're eliminating number one, two, three, and seven. Tell us what you want to, what you, what you have a problem with the rest of them. Uh, basically, what just I just wanted to fit within the guidelines because if you see the properties are very small, I just don't want to have such a loss of um, the softscape because it was a quite a sub substantial reduction from a sixty percent to. But I think they have already taken it away. My understanding, correctly, it was a little bit confusing with the whole interruption of two different people. It was from we need to have a sixty percent minimum front yard, but now it's down to forty-seven. So did they bring it back to the sixty? Please don't ask us questions. Just make your presentation and we'll have them come re respond to you. I would just, I object to proceeding beyond the guidelines. That's basically what I want to say. Like okay. expanding forward too much sideways and above. Okay, next. 
That's uh, it. Well, those are the, the three that I wanted to say. Yes, because of the okay. size of the lots. Yes. Okay. Thank you. We'll we'll get them uh, the, the the process here. We have you speak. Then the agent comes and address those concerns, and we make a decision. So, um, any question for this speaker? All right. So the next one we have is Peter and Evi Bar Barutini Barutis. Peter and Evi. Yes. Hi. Okay. Could you please state your name and address, please? Yes, hi, my name is uh, Peter Brutus. Um, my name and um, my address is 27 Chipping Road. Uh, I'm an immediate neighbor. Very good, thank you. So tell us, tell us what's your concern. Uh, yeah, so I have a few concerns here. Uh, so we have, uh, just to keep in mind, we have two new houses. Lisa that just spoke there, she has a brand new house. We have a brand new house that we just built as well. And uh, we you know we followed the guidelines. So. The, I just want to highlight the key concerns we have is the height of the home, uh, the green spaces that uh, it's, it appears that they've eliminated that, um, and also that the, ho the house is moving forward. But I'll just go through each of these items. So item number three, which outlines a combined width of vehicle entrances of 7.52 meters. This is greater than the six meter requirement that we have. I don't know if you heard what so, they said. I don't know if you heard what they said. They're eliminating number three. They're not asking for anything on number three. Okay, well, um, that wasn't clear to me. If, they, if they're eliminating three, that's fine. So a number on item number four, it has a lot coverage of 31.81%. Uh, the maximum lot coverage is 25%. So that's item number four. So we object to that. And also item number five is the height of the home. Um, the maximum permitted height is 10 meters. Uh, the, you know, we want to try to harmonize the height of the homes, the adjacent homes that are on the street to, to be fairly uniform. Um, so there, we don't feel that's necessary to go to 10.87 uh, meters rather than the 10 meters. And, you know, that could be adjusted through the roof and the trusses. They could adjust the slope, slope of the roof to comply with the 10 meter requirement. Um, now, the other thing that it, it appears a little bit confusing is the house, uh, it's being applied as a two story, but it looks like a three story. It has two ground levels, it has one ground level in the front, another ground level in the back. So maybe that's adding to the height. Um, item number six talks about the exterior walls. Um, I, these they're exceeding the height uh, requirements there as well and uh, and as well item number eight uh, the side wall uh, west side yard setback uh, the requirement is for 1.8 meters which uh, they're basically taking uh, one foot off of the side west side yard setback so those are the those are the concerns that uh, that we have as a as a neighbor Thank you. But uh, otherwise, you know, we're, we're supportive of new construction, but we just want to follow the rules here. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Any questions for this speaker? Okay. Now we'll go to the next one. Bijan Gianfar, are you there? Mr. Chair, please be advised that Bijan didn't wish to speak. Who no, doesn't wish to be? Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Bataglia, could you please read, could you please come and, and address the concerns you heard? From uh, from 31 and 27 chipping. Okay, uh, he was concerned uh, about the uh, the lot coverage from 25 percent to 31.81 percent. We uh, we feel that this is a variance that is uh, minor in nature, and uh, and uh, and agree with the uh, uh, as, as we said, we we agree with the planning recommendations that that this is in keeping with uh, good. Planning practice and uh, and um, uh, and so we, we uh, we're going to be um, uh, well. I, I don't have anything more to say about that one. The uh, yeah. Uh, the other question is um, is uh, you said that it was three stories, but um, the um, the, the uh, yeah, but the garage is considered the uh, the basement um, as part of the basement. So uh, it's it's really a two-story house. Uh, the uh, the other the other 
uh, one was the uh, 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 the side yard setback. Uh, he said it was 1.8. Our, our side yard setback is 1.68 on that side. Um, as, and you'll note, because the lot is, um, if you look at the site plan, can you can you put bring the site plan? Up? The the only reason, and, and you see the shape of the lot is is, uh, is an angle. The 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 closest part is 1.68. The rest of it is much more uh, than 1.68, as you can see. Okay. So that's uh, that's that one. What was the other one? Uh, 0.52 is the, is the other. So that's it. I think I've answered those. Um, now, um, no. Is there anything else that uh, that I'm missing that he had concern about? Was it the height of the wall? Sir, are you talking to us or what? Yeah, I um. Okay. Uh, I think you, I've uh, when you I've answered the concerns. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's that's the concern that you answered too. Let's see what the what the members have to say. Um, members, any any question for this speaker? And if there is no questions, we need the motion. Ms. Satarodi? Yes, to you, Mr. Chair, I would like to put forward a motion to approve this application with the following changes. Variance number one, two, three, and seven eliminated. And I also would like to, to, um, to add the staff condition that the side exterior main wall height be developed in accordance with the east side and the west side elevation drop drawing submitted to the city and also subjected to the transportation memo and all subjected to the um, uh, urban forestry condition one and two. Thank you. Okay. Uh, question is Mr. Uh, second, Mr. Hunt. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Okay. So your application is approved sub uh, unanimously subject to those changes you made and subject to the Staff report and transport. Hello? Sorry. Who's speaking? Excuse me. Sorry, Joel would like to make it. I'm sorry? Uh, we finished with the application is approved. We can't, we can't open it. Finished. So, um, so that was approved and, uh, and based on those changes, and what you heard mentioned about the conditions, and that's finished. Now we now we're into into item number thirty-four, and then number thirty-four, which is uh, two sixty-two Rainy Avenue, application number thirty-four. And here we have Daniel Vinca uh, Vincani, or Vin yeah, Daniel Vincani. Are you there? Hello. This is uh, Daniel Vinciani, Vinciani, 335 okay. Rathburn Road. Thank you. So here we have a um, we have a new dwelling, five variances, including three stories, and the uh, we have uh, seven letters of support. But the staff is asking to refuse variance number four, which is associated with the number of stories. So could you please make a short presentation? We don't have anybody else to speak on this application. Uh, yes, of course. Um, good afternoon, Chairman and Committee members. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak here today. I would just like to give some context about uh, uh, the neighborhood first. Uh, Rainy Avenue is a two-way street that runs east-west between Dufferin Street and Bathurst Street, and Yorkdale Shopping Mall being a few blocks north of the property in question. <laughs> Rene Avenue consists mainly of one-story and two-story houses, but there is also the presence of a uh, mid-rise condominium directly across the street from the subject property. As shown on the supporting material uh, submitted to, to the committee, the neighborhood is currently experiencing growth and development in the form of new uh, detached two-story residential houses. 
but is also currently undergoing um, a massive revitalization transformation of old neighborhoods in the form of condominium buildings and future three-story townhouses, which is part of the Lawrence Heights uh, revitalization uh, program, which I think is second to uh, Regent Park. Um, we are proposing a three-story detached house with the third floor being entirely inside the roof. Um, there are a few reasons that I'd like to expand on this and address uh, staff's comment. Uh, for starters, we have a growing family living with uh, grandparents that have outgrown their existing space and are excited um, to move into a new place that they can call home and meet their uh, new needs. Um, second is the issue of affordability that we all are well too familiar with in the city and that is why we are proposing a three bedroom secondary suite on the main floor that can accommodate a growing uh, young family, provide rental supply to the market, and most importantly, provide financial assistance to the owner for the construction uh, of the project down the road. <clears throat> um, the design of the house does not pose any deviation from the surrounding build form or excessive massive massing, but uh, in the contrary, it blends in well with the current character and consistent pattern with a traditional design that's uh, apparent in the neighborhood and also looks like a two-story house uh, from the outside. Um, it's worth mentioning that the building um, has a lower wall height of 6.73 meters, which is way lower than what the bylaw allows at 7.5 meters. Uh, in in most cases, this height wall height variance get exceeded with a with a new two story houses uh, in the neighborhood. Um, I'd like also to emphasize um, that we are in compliance with uh, building height. Uh, lot coverage, length, depth, and uh, requirements for landscaping. Uh, the side yard variance for of 1.22 meter has been proved to be very commonly approved um, in the neighborhood uh, with new construction dwellings, even with uh, consent applications at times for lots that are undersized, and this can be seen on the supporting documents that has been submitted to committee. Um, we believe that we have um, mitigated uh, neighbors' concerns through our design process, hence the support letters that we received from the neighbors. And most importantly, both adjacent neighbors are uh, supporting um, this proposal. Um, to conclude, um, I'm of on the opinion that the current proposal uh, in front of you is minor in nature and consists of a gradual sensitive growth approach um, which is reflective of the province's uh, growth plan and is situated in a neighborhood which as mentioned earlier is undergoing a significant uh, revitalization um, the proposal i believe is desirable appropriate and fits well within the character of the neighborhood by uh, having a traditional design and I respectfully ask the committee to consider approval of this application. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're, uh, you're very good on your timing, just five minutes. Um, okay, uh, members, we don't have anybody else here registered, just the, uh, just the applicant. So any question for the applicant? Mr. Khan? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, through you, sir, I, want, I would like to know that variance number four, number of stories three, while building height has been not included in the variance, how you are going to achieve within 10 meters? Okay. Uh, thank you. I would like to respond to that. So our overall uh, building height is uh, um, at what the bylaw requires. Um, the third floor is entirely inside the roof. So in order to not have um, 
a building height variance, we had to make sure that the eaves of the building are way below what the bylaw allows at 7.5 meters. So in our case, I believe we are at 6.73 meters in order to uh, accommodate the third floor um, inside the roof, yet also complying with overall building height and uh, not having any massing and scaling issues. Any other question? And uh, if no question, can I have a, can I have a motion then, please? Anyone for a motion? Ms. Atarodi? To you, Mr. Chair, um, I, I have been convinced that this um, third story, uh, number of stories third, because it's within the roof and they didn't, don't have any height variance, I have been convinced that this is, um, this is not major. And uh, I would like to put forward a motion to approve this application subjected to urban forestry condition uh, number three. Uh, 262 condition number three and that's my motion thank you second miss okay miss uh, sankar was uh, seconding all in favor opposed mr uh, khan is opposing and uh, sir your application is approved uh subject to just forestry condition one and two you said uh Ms. Sankar, three. is it one and three? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Okay. Now, uh, number 35, application 35, which is 159 Delmont Avenue. And here we have uh, Jim Pfeffer. Are you there? Jim? Jim? Uh, that, this is me, Jim Pfeffer from Echo Architects at 3 Bridgman Avenue in Toronto, Ontario. Thank you. We have here a new dwelling, 14 variances, and uh, we have just letters of support, and I have nothing here. Could you please, um, uh, under normal condition, we just move on, but here, because there are 14 variances, including the building length and etc. So could you please make a short presentation uh, as to the merits of this application? Uh, certainly. I don't know if staff could bring up the booklet of supporting material that we uh, submitted to the Committee of Adjustment. Um, and I can quickly explain all of the variances we're looking for, which are very much in keeping with the neighborhood. Um, there's that booklet. Is staff going to bring that up or? Maybe you can keep going while they're looking for it. Okay. Um, so as, uh, oh, <laughs> as we said, um, it's very much in keeping with the neighborhood. If you take a look at the front elevation, if you're able to see that, what you'll see is that this is a cable form house with the eave line um, in parts actually at the second story and in, in parts well below the second story ceiling. So the massing of the house is actually, you know, quite low because it's a gable form. We want to have, you know, a nice proportion to those gables and the height of the building, the, the, the peak of the gable is actually at 10 meters. So it's really only a completely invisible um, upper drainage roof, which goes beyond the allowable height. Going on to the second page, I, uh, I don't know why this isn't coming up. Um, you can see the building in context on the site. If you zoom into that, we are in fact ask, asking for a length variance, but you can see we're significantly less long than the house that you see on the east side 
uh, were pretty similar to the house on the west side, and you'll see that further in the aerial photograph, which act, that house actually goes, you know, further back. We, we can show how we're kind of more well screened, actually, from those neighboring houses. Hold on to this page for a moment. This page, you can actually see the length of the houses along this block, and you can see a lot of the houses on this block or actually go you know considerably further back than what we're proposing that includes uh 19 maddock there and um number seven maddock which actually recently went to committee of adjustment and received some variances considerably in excess of what we're seeking you mentioned we had a kind of a large number of variances part of the reason those variances are multiplied is because we're seeking a side yard setback of 1.2 and 1.5 meters. You can see on this page, number of houses which have been granted equal or lesser variances. It's in keeping with the established character of this, you know, established neighborhood. And there's some follow on variances. So we ask for these side setback variances. Is this, you know, the chimney moves with the, the side of the house. So we need another variance for the chimney. The porch moves to the side of the house. We need the porch, we need the canopy. So we need more variances for basically the fact that we're building to this side setback that's in keeping with the character of the neighborhood. Um, and then if the main wall height variance, if you just wanna take a look at page five of this booklet here, I'll explain that. And then uh, I think after that, I can maybe uh, show you the fo some photos of the context and take some questions. Yeah, so the sidewall, you're allowed 70% of the sidewalls have to be below that main wall height. So the only part that goes above the main wall height are these gables, which are there to add interest to the form of the building. So that's that area in red. But the red area, that's actually within the 70%. It's only those tiny blue corners on the side of each red gable. If we cut those out, this would be compliant. So you can see we're really just trying to make an interesting building. The gable form actually helps reduce the apparent mass of the building. So we're not really offending anyone with this main wall height. And if you go down just to those images from the neighborhood, uh, particularly the last page, I'll show you uh, just one more page down, if you could. Here you can see, yeah, so there's one, one uh, 31 Dale Mount that's really right beside this. There you can see, you know, a full generous two stories with a roof on top. We're certainly a lot less large than that. Uh, at the bottom, you can see 19 Maddock that was recently by approved by committee. There's a third story in there. And again, two full stories, big main wall. You know, we're doing something that's actually much more um, amassing that's it's much less massive, as it were. Uh, so I can take any questions. Okay, are you, are you finished, Yeah. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, we'll see if the members have any question. Any, any question uh, for this speaker? I don't have anything else except the, uh, except the letters of support. Uh, we have lots of them, I counted 10 of them, and uh, there is nothing else. So, can I have a motion then? Who's the winner? Because to, this is the last one, last variant, last uh, application. So, hey, Miss Miss Tarodi, thank you. Okay, can I um, yes, um, to you, Mr. Chair, I would like to put forward a motion to approve this application with no condition. Thank you. Second. Can I have a second, please? Ms. Sankar, all in favor? Opposed? Okay, we have two opposed and two, uh, and two, uh, and to um, to against. Okay, so um, I uh, I looked at the uh, at the application, and the reason I said let's get a, an get a um, uh, a presentation because of the variances that looked a lot of variances and building length and height, 
But uh, after, we, after we, we heard the applicant and uh, looking at the uh, variances, yeah, and uh, the um, letters of support and all that stuff, I have to agree with the uh, members who voted for it, and I'd like to uh, join them and vote for it, and we approve the application with no conditions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a great evening. Okay. Well, you're the winner because you're the last one. We finished today, so you should. <laughs> should Perfect. Buy, you should buy a lottery ticket. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay. Have a great night. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Can I have a motion to terminate, please, Mr. Khan? Terminate. Yeah. Yes, sir. <clears throat> yes, sir. Thank you. Second. You want to stay here? <laughs> Ms. Ankar seconding. All in favor? Okay, the minute is, the meeting is terminated and is what, is uh, 6.15 or 6.14, whatever. I thought we were gonna, I thought we were... Goodbye everyone, thank you very much. Bye, excellent job team, bye.